day and you don't and you don't get anything from them you don't get like anything back but you watch battlefield earth your brain cells die it's proven <laughs> i only watched 20 minutes of it so but i you, still but have a couple good ones left Just to watch couple. battlefield earth to be influenced by john travolta that's in that yeah. costume oh. Whatever. Whatever. His Klingon wannabe thing. I know that's exactly get... what it was. Was a Klingon wannabe. Right, let's get to it. Let's let's go back to wrestling on this show. Let's go. That'd to be a great line. idea. And Tip City and the Sandman. Welcome to the wrestling guys. Hey, uh, I've got a good replacement for Jerry the King Lawyer. Who is that? Herb Albert. You got you. He would talk about the puppies. He may even bite a few of them if you know. Marv Albert. Mar I was gonna say her what Herb Albert would talk about trumpets. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you mean Marv, Marv Albert? Albert. You know, yeah, Marv Albert's kind of the freaky thing like Jerry Dollar is. So, yeah, yeah, you can see that. You can see uh, that. Can, another question. He works for like NBC, a... NBC and the WWF on the XFL. Maybe there's well, a connection there. <laughs> well, not for long. Could be. Yeah. yeah. Hey, is there going to be a SmackDown 3? Uh, for PlayStation? Yeah. Uh, there, for PlayStation 2. Uh, but I talked to uh, Chris at THQ the other day. He said that... As of right now, there's no plans to release a SmackDown 3 for the regular PlayStation, but only for the PlayStation 2. Well, that'll work. All right. That means that right. PlayStation games are going to start being phased out. Oh, they've you already will. started. Uh -huh. Yeah, they've already started big time. Thanks a lot for the phone call. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you, All corporate right. America. Love Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Julia is raising her hand. She has a comment. Yes, dear. No, um... If Lawler is gone, we're not going to be able to hear the word puppies at all, are we? I don't think because he has a trademark I, on that I, word. No, no, seriously, I thought he did. I thought he had it to where it can't be used in that context in a, a, a wrestling type show because it was his. Um, it was his word in a way, and at least in that context, referring to those in a, in a wrestling type show. Well, I thought I it was Deborah that came, was the first one that said puppies. That's what I thought. I, I don't know. Because I'm pretty I sure. Thought, well, if she trademark it is what I mean. I had, I, I, had heard. I doubt it. I doubt anything that is said on a WWF show could be trademarked by an individual other than Vince McMahon. Yeah, good point. Okay, I wasn't sure. I just heard it was trademark. I didn't know. If it was no, by. I'm. I'm sure it isn't. I, I don't think that you could trademark something like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I know that, um, you know, let's go ahead and just get totally off the subject of everything we've talked about so far. Sure. But I know, like, Pat Riley from the NBA, the, the coach, he actually trademarked the term three-peat uh, when he was the coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, and they won back-to-back -back titles. So when the Chicago Bulls did it in the mid-'90s, and they came up with all the shirts, you know, three-peat and everything else, Pat Riley got residuals from that. Um, because he actually did trademark that phrase, so and he trade back, he trademarked the slick back look. Yes, too. he did, which you took a little bit too. So do you have to pay him royalties? And I, am, I have no idea what you're talking. My hair, I have nothing on my when, hair. When you were a manager at times, you did slick back your hair once or twice. No, never did. Never did. No. Nope. Okay. Anyway, let's go back to the list. There's some other names we've got on the list that could possibly replace. Um, Jerry Lawler. And I, I think we pretty much hit on most of the ones I've got. Bobby Heenan, Jesse Ventura, Taz, Kevin Kelly, Tom Pritchard, Vincent Shane McMahon, Joey Styles, Joel Gertner, Cyrus, Jim Cornette. And the Goblet Gooker. The Goblet Gooker, there you go. Michael Hayes has been brought up uh, by a couple of callers. We've heard, um, uh, you know, there, uh, what was the, uh, the list that we had emailed to us? Midian was on the list. Al Snow was on the list. Lillian Garcia. Lillian Garcia. L Lillian no. Garcia can't even do a proper job no. ring announcing. So that is not going to happen. Deborah McMichael was brought up as no. I no, I said your, no on that. Your one. thought of Mick Foley, I thought, was an excellent idea. M Mick Foley, or like I said, Paul Heyman. That would be that, that would, would be, be the a coup. coup. That would be the coup. And I don't know if it'd be possible. I don't know if that's something Paul would want to do. But again, I, I don't know if you've wa have you watched any of the you know the the uh, fanatic series. Yeah. Any of that? yeah, you've watched those. Sure. Yeah, Foley does a pretty good job on this. He does along a very with Coachman. Good job on this. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's basically playing, he's playing the funny guy, which is, you know, exactly what you would have to play next to, you know. Tully's totally got the cough, so yes. you okay over there? Oh, good. Okay. You know, that's exactly what you'd have to play to next to, uh, to Jim Ross. It could, it could be. We'll see what happens. And again, there's another case where Jim Ross and McFoley are friends. So again, Absolutely. it's probably going to be a friend of Jim Ross's that gets that role. We'll have to wait and see. Let's go ahead and go to a break. Your phone calls, we come back. We have some open lines. Let's fill them. 457-1065. We are the Wrestling Guys. On Buckeye Country, 106.5. I've not uh, been listening to the show. Jerry the King Lawler has quit the World Wrestling Federation and protest over the firing of his wife, Stacy Carter, better known as the Cat. Bummer. You're upset by that, right? I'm I'm so upset. But apparently, um, you know, Jerry Lawler 
uh, tried to go to Vince McMahon and Jim Ross and say, hey, guys, look, if you let her go, <laughs> I'm walking out. And they said, oh, okay. see you later. Yeah, there's, bye -bye. there's the door. And uh, so now the question is, will Jerry Lawler, will this all smooth over and Jerry Lawler comes back? Um, he he did, was not at SmackDown. He, I don't, I, I really don't think so. I think both, you know, both him and McMahon really have, I think, you know, they're both old school, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, I would think even Lawler more so than, than McMahon. And I think there's a certain amount of pride there, and I don't think that either one of those guys would budge. The other thing, too, with this is you take a look at um, Jerry Lawler and through his website, kinglawler.com, and through other sources on the Internet is getting this story out. Mm -hmm. If this was something that just happened behind closed doors and we were not talking about it and it wasn't reported to us and it did not become the headline story that it has, then I think maybe you have an opportunity where Jerry Lawler could go back to Vince and say, Hey, Vince, you know what? I'm sorry. I understand you. it's a business. You did what you had to do. I want to come back. And given the friendship Vince and Jerry have had, sure. Vince would say, You know what? That's fine. Come on back. But now, if Vince McMahon takes this guy back, Vince looks weak in a way. Absolutely. And, you know, despite any friendship, you know, business is business. We saw what Vince did to Bret Hart. Right. And uh, to think that he wouldn't do it to somebody else, <laughs> don't kid yourself. It would be very interesting, too, and I thought this during the break when you had mentioned Paul Heyman maybe coming in to replace Jerry Lawler. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to, you know, four or five years ago with the ECW angle, and Paul Heyman and Jerry Lawler really going at each other. Could this be a way, and again, this is a whole conspiracy theory, this could possibly be an angle where Paul Heyman does come in to replace Jerry Lawler and maybe use that as a storyline in some way. I don't think it is. I don't think it is, but I know that, you know, we love to bat around conspiracy theories on this show sometimes. Okay. All right, here, I'll even throw a little bit more at you. Now, you're not a booker, but go ahead. No, I'm not. But what about this? What if Heyman is actually already involved in the WWF, and he has created this whole scheme to start interest up in the WWF, and he's created this whole storyline and leaked it out because you know how much Heyman likes to use the internet and try to work the smarts. And one thing which this could also generate, although I think the buzz would be somewhat minimal, is on a national level, because Jerry Lawler is a color analyst with the XFL, and I would assume that by Jerry quitting the WWF, that means he also quit the XFL. Yeah. So you know Rudy Martsky of USA Today is probably going to write about it in his column. Some of the other sports journalists will pick it up and you know run with it. You know Jerry Lawler's quit the WWF because of a dispute with Vince McMahon, and maybe this is you know a Paul Heyman booking scheme. Would not be surprising. Not at all. Let's go to line one. We have another Amy. This one's from Greenville. You're on the wrestling guys. Hey, what's up with uh, Matt Hardy and Lita? Are you, you sound like you're a little bit upset by that. Um, no, I'm just kind of wondering what's going on there. You know, the thing is with Matt and Lita, I had heard for some time that she was dating a Hardy. And I yeah. heard sometimes Jeff, and I would heard sometimes Matt, maybe both, who knows what goes on on I, the road. I, no, I actually heard that, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, my Hardy boys wouldn't. Yeah. No, 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 yes, they were. They're too clean cut to do. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. You're talking about a guy. I like the Hardys. Don't give me I a, love But you're Hardy. talking about Jeff Hardy who dyes his hair multicolors, mm -hmm. and they have the whole kind of, uh, you know. Uh, Amy will agree with me on the fact that it's not what's on the outside, it's the inside, right, Amy? Right, Thank right. You. So what if he dyes his hair? Yeah, but most of the times, no, the, most of the times, most of the times, if you're talking about it in the bedroom, they're using what's on the outside. <laughs> Okay, so all right, it's got a little bit has, has a little bit to do with that. Actually, Lita did a interview, and she said that she is not dating either of the Hardys. Yeah. And you know, now take that for what you will. I keep hearing that yeah, she does date Jeff and is actually very, 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 um, <laughs> um, <laughs> very. Dom no dominant over <laughs> dominant over. Me. No, I mean, I mean, in other words, she's you know she doesn't even allow uh, the girls to she come up to him and uh, uh, or anything along those lines. But well, I, you know, if if they were acting now, they've known each other for quite some time. I mean, the Hardy Boys actually, the Hardys train Lita. I mean, right. I think they need to train her a little longer, but yeah. they, you know, <laughs> they they trained her, but. Um, 
You know, I, I think that kiss, there was a little bit something, you know, I, it, that was more than just a little If you kiss. watch, if it you really, watch yeah. movies and you watch TV, you know what a stage kiss looks like. Yeah. And you also know what a real kiss looks like. They were swapping some tongue spit on that kiss. No, yeah, yeah most definitely. Yeah, so they right. were, uh, they were getting into it a little bit. Anything well, else? Nope, that's it. Okay. All right. Appreciate the phone call. Thank you very much, Amy. Oh, Julie just cut her off from the phone. She's trying to say thanks. That's okay. Yeah. Let's go to... See, uh, I think Julie's vindictive. I don't think she likes a lot of women calling this well, show yeah, either. Julia... I actually like it when it, women it, call. There's someone on my side. It's I have very well music. known that Julia is a Hardy Boys fan. Yeah. And it's very attractive to Hardy Boys. So it's very easy to see why she maybe doesn't like the idea of Matt and Lita actually, you know... Being more than just friends. Well, you know what? I, I, I've, I've read on many sites that there's a whole bunch of people that are just really upset <laughs> at the whole heart. Have you seen how many like little hearty sites there are? There's a ton. Yeah. I mean, they are. I mean, it's pretty scary. The best analogy I can make about the Hardy Boys is that they are the Rock and Roll Express of the 21st century. I think they're bigger than the Rock and they Roll are, Express. They are your teen beat uh, you know, icons yeah. for the WWF, your 16 magazine. Is that even still around? I, I, have no idea. I have no idea either. Just, just think if they ever learned how to sing. Oh, that'd be horrible. But we've heard for quite some time the WWF is interested in putting together a Hardy versus Hardy match, yeah. at least if not a feud. See, and once again, and it's it goes to play. You know, you put a woman in the middle, the middle of two wrestlers too. It's got something's going to happen. Our you pre- can't you can't do business video. You can't no, you can't do business in relationships. <laughs> Let's go to line two and go to, I think it's Mills Creek, and talk to Kevin. You're on the Wrestling Guys. Yeah, what's going on with ECW? Last time I saw them, they were on TNN, and after that it was gone. I thought, uh-oh, what's happening with them? Well, ECW um, left TNN, and pretty much after the World Wrestling Federation came on board, they, you know, left, and... Um, you know, Paul Heyman's had a number of financial problems and uh, losing a number of his wrestlers and trying to keep the company afloat and personally going into millions and millions of dollars of debt. And there has not been an ECW show in about a month yeah. at least. And um, there's a pay-per-view scheduled for a week and a half, which is very doubtful. They're advertising it. Yeah. Two, two weeks ago, Francine was here in the studio and she said, you know, I, I have no idea what's going to happen, right. you know. Um, these guys are, for the most part, they're, they're world champions now in the World Wrestling Federation. Just incredible signed to the WWF. Steve Carino and Kid Cash are on their way to WCW. Um, Johnny Swinger was on, and is now in WCW. Yep. Um, Simon Diamond's getting a look at from the WCW. Don Marie could be going to the WWF. Um, Tajiri is signed with the World Wrestling Federation. Jerry Lynn is signed with Tommy the World Wrestling Dreamer Federation. Tommy Dreamer may actually be the road manager for the WWF. Yes, yeah, so there is a lot going on there. And um, we'll have to we'll have to see what happens. Let's go to line one. And is this Razman from Kettering? You're on the wrestling. Hey, it's guys. Razman. Hi guys, how you doing? Not Good. Razman. Is my radio too loud? Yeah, you know you're fine. Julia just like misses your R-E-Z. name. This is R E Z. But this is Razman. Okay. I'm Razman. Well, I'm just. Yeah. That's okay. It's it's cool. We'll properly um, discipline Julia for you. Uh, thanks. She needs. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but um, I I was thinking how awesome. Would uh, you know, we were talking about um, how this whole thing might be a storyline that that Heyman wrote, and you've got all these guys from ECW coming in. What if it's like a new WWF versus an old WWF, and you have like uh, uh, Jim Ross and Bobby Heenan on Raw versus Paul Heyman and Michael Cole and Cavill on SmackDown, and it's like new versus old. Uh, yeah, I think it reeks too much, a little bit too much of NWO. Yeah, I, I think um, you know, not not a bad idea. I think it's just a little bit too you know twisted and too in depth. Um, and I could see maybe the where, where I thought you were going to go with it, Razman, is maybe having you know Jerry Lawler bring in some of these guys that Paul Heyman used to have, and maybe a thing where Paul Heyman abandoned these guys and right. left them left them out to dry. I think that that would maybe playing too much to the internet smarts. And we saw what happened with WCW when you tried to do that, and they're playing to basically 5% of the wrestling population, and it just doesn't work. Right. I, I would say that if you see something next week on one of the programs where and if Jerry Lawler is not back next week and they publicly mention that Jerry Lawler is no longer with the World Wrestling Federation, then you can maybe say this is a storyline, this yeah. is an angle. But if they're quiet and you don't hear anything... Um, and they just go on with business as usual. Then you know, then it's it's. Well, I don't think this is a storyline. I don't either. Not not at all. 
No, I don't think it is either, but I just think it would be a good thing. Oh, I, I, I think with, I agree with you. If this did turn out to be a storyline, um, let's face it, Jerry Lawler's still a talent. I think he still could have a place in the World Wrestling Federation, and uh, I would hate to see him, you know, out of the company. But you okay. know, if, if he is out of the company, it's his own doing. I'm sorry, but he's the one that told Vince I quit. Exactly. Right, you know, he, he, like you said, you can't miss the business with uh, personal, personal things. But can I ask another question real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, what, is, what is this deal with the big show as a hardcore champion? I mean, do you guys think that is the, really the best place for him? I mean, you got a guy, a lot of guys stuck in mid-card, like Chris Benoit, Chris Jericho, that could move in the main event status and, and push the big show in and have him take over. I don't think they know what to do with him. I think that probably from an ability standpoint right now, the hardcore division is probably the best place for the big show. Right. What I couldn't understand is Sunday, him coming out into the main event no, and choke slamming no. everybody. That and you know what? We sense. haven't talked about the pay-per-view at all. Have right. you noticed that? I, yeah, I know. I, I know. That. That's why I was saying that, because the hardcore division's a little lower on the scale than the Dopey Dress title, and they had him run and interfere in that, that match, no way out, and now he... And he the hardcore champ at the same time it doesn't make sense. Unless they're looking to maybe to elevate the hardcore title a little bit, but you know, it certainly doesn't seem that I way. Know. You can't elevate the hardcore title. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I, if you were, uh, Big Show's not the guy to. Uh, this, is, this, this is what the hardcore title still is is still around. The hardcore title remains around, so you could use twenty guys in one pay-per-view match and you can have okay well you're not booked well why don't you go after the hardcore title <laughs> what the hell is billy gunn going after the hardcore title for he wasn't booked he wanted, he wanted to make an appearance because it's like we said the guy can't wrestle anymore exactly yeah. place to put him. i'm like i'm like does he have a feud with any one of those guys no. that were out there no i no. picked up i picked up the new raw magazine today and in the article, and Jim Ross is Colin. He also writes for the magazine. He kind of just makes little quotes and little bullet points. Mm -hmm. And one of those is: Is it fair that some critics compare the one Billy Gunn to former WWF competitor Lex Luger? <laughs> uh, probably not, because actually at this point, Luger works better than Billy Gunn. Yeah, exactly. We're and he can actually talk. Yeah, that's. Uh, we we need to talk about the pay per view. We'll talk about the pay per view. What your thoughts about that? We're going to wrap up when we come back. We are the wrestling guys. Uh, Buckeye Country, one hundred six point five. Welcome back to the Wrestling Guys. Sean Stidham, Willie F. Julia, wrapping up another show. Go, go on. Did I, what did I miss? Did I, I just miss know. a meeting? Julia just found something really funny. Did you want to hear something funny? One of the, the, the program directors from WMMX Mix, 1077. Which is a clear channel is a station clear. in the yeah. building here, yes. Uh, Jeff Stevens gave me a call. And on um, my answer machine, it's the Rock's theme music. Okay? Yes. And he left me a message because I wasn't there at the time. And when I came into work the next day, he goes, he goes, I, he, being sarcastic, he goes, I really like um, your message. And I go, well, do you know what that is? He goes, what, some rap stuff? Because <laughs> 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 he didn't have a clue. Anyway, it was funny. And oh, I don't want to know. Okay, anyway. Uh, by the way, Matt emailed us and said puppies was a term first used by the road dog and then picked up by Jerry Lawler. Oh, okay. Well, we were talking about that earlier. There you go. Thank you a lot. Let's talk about the pay-per-view. Yes, excellent pay-per-view. Excellent pay-per-view, and I think that, uh, I don't think anything, I don't know what can top Austin and Triple H the for only, match of the year. Well, I'm sorry, but that was one classic match. And actually, you know what, if, if that match hadn't gone well, that fatal four-away, was worth the price of the pay-per-view. It's kind of odd to talk about, you know, the pay-per-view going into WrestleMania, maybe having the match of the year. Um, exactly. It, it, that the match was just that good. Um, you, it's going to be very tough for Austin and Rock to top that, and it's going to be yeah. disappointing um, yeah. because everybody's going to think, man, that Austin and Rock match was you know, so, or Austin Helmsley match was so good. Austin Rock is going to be great. Well, probably not. I hate to say that. Yeah. But the psychology, Triple H may be the best ring psychologist right now in the business. Uh, I would have to agree with that. Um, and it's, it's the little things that I look at whenever maybe the camera is not directly on him and his facial expression and mm -hmm. how he reacts to things in the ring, the, the things that are happening around him. Uh, maybe when Stephanie has the mic or stuff, the way he conducts himself is just, it's, it's, it's a beauty to watch Absolutely. from a psychology standpoint. I mean, you know, even, it, it was just, and it's just little tiny things that you can, like you said, that you watch that he does. One thing I'll bring up from the pay-per-view. Um, Austin, he had Austin in the figure four leg lock. Mm -hmm. 
Austin, you know, he, and he was doing the whole rope thing, you know, grabbing the top rope, classic heel stuff. Austin tried to start moving him, you know, towards the center of the ring so he could reverse it. You see Triple H at least three or four times look back and try to find the rope and grab it. And it's just those little tiny things that Triple H does that, you know, lot, not a, a lot of other guys would do or even have the sense to do. Right. That just adds to that match. You know, I Classic go, match. I go back to when, um, you know, when Triple H was first revealed as the guy that hit Austin. Yeah. And the way you could look at him and the way he was just... His expressions of where he was seething and just his facial expressions, you could see the hatred he had for Steve Austin. Absolutely. And that's what I miss in watching wrestling. That's what I yeah. miss is when you can look at the guys and what they're doing in the ring and for it to be believable and that they actually hate that guy. I, I agree with you 100%. That's the parts that I that I really, really miss from seeing. Um, now, now, even, even you know, the other, the other matches on the pay-per-view, actually, you know, the Stephanie versus Trish match was not as bad as you know as it could have been. Nope. Or that I thought it was going to be. The main event was actually pretty good. Well, with the exception of you know Hepner. Earl Hebner, <laughs> <laughs> totally screwing up. Yeah, you know, and I I thought that and for those of you that missed it, um, the rock rock bottoms Kurt Angle at the finish of the match covers him. Hepner stops the count at two. Angle in no way kicked out. No. <laughs> uh, it, it, there was no way he kicked out. And so The Rock had to pick him back up, do another rock bottom, and finish the match. But Hepner blew the spot. And so Hepner took a lot of heat backstage. Personally, I thought it did a lot to build up Kurt Angle. Sure. Because the idea is to make Angle look tougher, more intense. Right. And not so much of a, um, of a scared wuss. heel. Yeah, a good, good term, a wuss. And for him to have to take two rock bottoms, I think, does, does loads for Kurt Angle's character. Sure. Being tougher. Um, I guess, you know, The Rock didn't like it. You know, I, I have to rock by him twice to finish him? No, I right. didn't have to do that, but oh well. And w what did you think about, uh, did you, now did you see when uh, Austin got hit in the head with the, with the, with the beer can? I missed that. I yeah. had some, a couple people mentioned it to me. I One person it. mentioned that Helmsley got hit with a bottle, too. Yeah, I totally, I totally missed it the first time that I watched it. Uh -huh. And then I watched it again after I, I heard that it happened. He got nailed. Really, he got absolutely nailed by a can. If you if you watch, it's the very very end of the match where, and that causes actually Triple H to move off of Austin. <laughs> Him getting beamed right in the top of the head with a with a beer can. Now this wasn't this was from a fan. It wasn't like the guy. Oh, the oh no no no! It was, I believe it was from a fan. Yeah, yeah most geez. definitely. No, I missed that. And you also have to think that. It is nice to see Chris Jericho actually win another pay per view. You know, he went to so yeah, long exactly. and, and that, losing that the That was a great match too. With the uh, four way elimination. Yeah. Um, it really not a bad match on the pay per view. Even the hardcore match. I mean, it was you know four and a half minutes and the title went switched <laughs> three times. But uh, you know, for what it was, it wasn't bad. Yeah. And they, you know, they didn't let Billy Gunn do a lot. Kind of has to. Ra he won the belt, lost it back yeah. a minute later. You know, but it's going to raise the bar now for WrestleMania because. Um, you know, those pay-per-views in between the big ones, your No Way Out and your Unforgivens and all that, they're not supposed to be marquee pay-per-views. Right, exactly. The, the effort they gave this past uh, this past uh, Sunday certainly was. Still, there's going to be something about WrestleMania. There's still going to be something about 80,000 people. Oh, yeah. And uh, I, I, I hope that I'm not jinxing it by saying, you know, I don't think that The Rock and Austin can have, you know, the greatest of matches. But at the same time, I don't. Because I think, unfortunately, you need to team Austin up with someone like, and as we have seen, Austin's best matches have come against guys that we know are classic technicians in the ring. His match against Benoit was wonderful. His match against uh, Steven Regal, or William Regal now, sorry, was wonderful, and now against Triple H. And I think that that's the kind of people that you need to keep him with. Austin and The Rock, I think, is just going to be them doing their little, their little spots. They each have to get their moves in. Exactly, and that's going to be um, that's going to be tough. But there's going to be something. This, you know, number one, WrestleMania already. The hype is there. Seventy thousand people in Texas yep. with Austin trying to get the belt back. That's going to be something special to see. The only the only way I think that they can add a little bit to it is they're going to have. I really think they're going to have to do some. I mean, I don't know what they can do to hype it up more. Now, you know, we've already seen it at one point. They've already wrestled before. At a WrestleMania. At a WrestleMania. Yeah. You know, it's not like this is the first time. And I, I don't know. What kind of things can you throw in the path? I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see over the next five weeks what things you can throw. 
Unless maybe, uh, you know, again, it's going to be in Texas. Maybe you make Shawn Michaels the guest referee, and he screws Austin out of the title in Texas. That's possible. And then you have an Austin and Michaels storyline to carry them through the summer. Rock and Triple H or Rock and Angle or something like that. Um, and I think Rock's going to have to take more time off than just the month of March to work I on the movie. Too. So maybe, you know, Rock can drop the belt. Let Triple H or Angle, whoever carried the belt for a couple of months, he can go off and film the rest of the uh, Scorpion King. Or do you think, or do you think actually that uh, maybe you know uh, with Austin saying you know Rock stay healthy, you think maybe that was sending a little signal that well maybe you know maybe Rock won't be in that match. No, there, I don't think really? there's any way that right. at the biggest show of the year for the World Wrestling Federation that the Rock misses the show. I just don't see it. All right. I mean maybe I'm wrong because anything can happen in the World Wrestling Federation. Right. But I just think that there's no way that The Rock misses, uh, misses WrestleMania. Could be him and Brooklyn. Could be. But see, there you go. There's the poster again. Oh, right, right. We have the poster now. The Royal Wrestling Federation presents live on pay-per-view WrestleMania X7. But well, it doesn't say Austin versus The Rock. No, but you had those two guys above the Astrodome. <laughs> With Houston, we have a problem. I think something's implied here. So we'll see. Quickly, let's uh, reset what's happened in case you're missing the news. First of all, what we've talked about for the majority of the show, Jerry the King Lawler has quit the World Wrestling Federation in protest over the firing of his wife, the cat Stacy Carter. Uh, nobody really knows for sure why Stacy was released. Jerry says we have no clue. People that we've talked to said, you know, cat's really just not somebody to hang around with backstage. She's no. Not a good person. Big ego. And Jerry's poor. Okay. She goes, I go. And said, Bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Uh, Lawler has two years left on his contract with the WWF, so don't expect him to go to WCW anytime soon. Why, why would you even try to confront Vince with all the stuff going on with the XFL? The man is a little bit down as it is. Jerry Lawler has some cojones to go and try and confront Vince. you got to give him that. Art Anderson apparently has been suspended uh, for two weeks for not being able to control Buff Bagwell and Lex Luger. Apparently, yeah. he laid out a match for those two guys. They got in the ring, decided to improvise and go against the script. And instead of Eric Bischoff disciplining Bischoff, or Bagwell and Luger, he decided to go after Arn Anderson. It, why does that make sense? Sure. I'm sure. Somewhere, I'm sure, in Eric Bischoff's genius mind, <laughs> there's sense. a reason, you know, us being the lowly radio talk show host we are, we have no I, idea. I think it because uh, Eric Bischoff can actually block a punch from Arn Anderson. <laughs> That's bad. What? That is bad. By the way, Thunder tonight. Um, what happens on Thunder tonight? Jeff Jarrett, Dustin Rose, uh, DDP, Booker T. They're all going to be on the program tonight. And so, uh, fun, fun for actually, Nitro was not bad this past Monday. Got to give no, it wasn't. Credit to it. it wasn't. Uh, well, so I didn't watch a lot of it, but Mike wasn't. Tyson's Mike Mike Tyson's manager says we are not going to Japan to fight uh, the guy Antonio Noki Ogawa or whatever. Oh, I've got something because otherwise, you know, Les Thatcher will kill us if he doesn't uh, let everyone know that tickets are on sale for the Grand right. Victoria Casino Show. Featuring Kane, mm -hmm. and you can get those by actually calling up 513-771-1650, which is the HWA offices, and they will get you tickets that way. And I can't tell, you know, I'm really excited, though, but I'll just say there's some big plans coming up in, in HWA, and I can't go into it, but once you hear about it, I hope that you're just as excited as I am. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? Uh, by the way, How's that for a tease? By the way, we do encourage you to buy your tickets, but next week we are going to have a couple of pair to give away on right. the show. So uh, that'll be nice, and we appreciate that from Les. And uh, Kane coming in is going to be a big time. Also, quickly, the WWF The Music Volume 5 debuting on the Billboard charts at number two, the highest ranking for a WWF CD. And, and you know what's huge about this, debut. too? This what's is that? actually huge. That it's coming off the Grammys week, and normally all those Grammy albums, things that would have won Grammys, those are the things that are the highest on the charts. And it just, just came in and totally blew it away. Very good point. Yep. Don't forget to call the Wrestling Guys hotline 285-0991. It is sponsored by Grips and Tips in West Carrollton. Get your XFL gear now. Yeah, it's going to it's be, gonna be a collector's, collector's item. item. You want to get it. And you can also get your NASCAR stuff. And you can also get billiard equipment and customized golf equipment. I know you have a nice little announcement you want to make. What? Yeah. I, I, I want to I say you know, congratulations to Graham, who... Who got straight A's on his report card? Very much to you. Go ahead, say. I got straight A's. There you go. There you go. All That's right. It. We're the wrestling guys. We are out. Bye. That's that era, you know, uh, apart too, because there's a lot of times that 
you can see so many spots and going, okay, well, I, I can see what they're setting up to and everything else. Whereas yeah, back in that know, era, I mean, you really did get a, a feel for what the fans wanted yeah, and see, could change on a dime. But, but see, you started off at the beginning, it's like painting the picture. You tell the storyline. Absolutely. Yep. You know, don't get me wrong. I watched WC. I don't never, remember, when I leave wrestling, I leave it. You know what I'm saying? I don't come home and watch Monday Night Raw. I don't watch Thursday Night. I, don't, I, never, I never watch wrestling. But other night, I was at a friend of mine's house, and uh, WCW was on. And they had two guys wrestling. And I watched this, and they did every high spot that you could ever think in your life. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And the finish was a small package. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I went, I, I thought about it, it, it never, you know, but it, 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 all it was was high spot, high spot, high spot, high spot. They never told a story of the whole match. You see, that's something I try to do. And I don't know if you guys ever come around. You know, I, I, I was up in Ohio. Matter of fact, I was up in Cleveland a couple of weeks ago, right outside of Cleveland. Uh, we did three shows up there for a guy named JT. Mm -hmm. And it was great. Uh, you know, I went up, went up there. So I, I go out and I tell a story. You know, I wish you guys would come to some of the independent shows and understand what I'm trying to say. Oh, Not only do I do that, I, you know, I, I try to involve the crowd in a, in a different way that you under, that you don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh, Especially if we do uh, like the military things with the little kids, you know, I get out. I mean, I'm out, I'm out in the crowd with the kids. They understand our business. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and when we go to some of these independent shows, we go with these guys. You know, af after you see twelve matches that are absolutely horrible. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> By the time we go on, the people out there are snoring, <laughs> yawning, you know. But in five minutes of that match, buddy, we got them doing cartwheels at ringside. Because right. that, you know, because they know how to tell a story, and they know how to work. One of the things I've talked to people that have seen you recently, um, as opposed to other people that are still on the independent circuit that were really, you know, had their heyday maybe 15 years ago, yeah. uh, is that you can still go. You're in good shape, and that if you really wanted to, you might still be able to go in on a Monday night or something like that and still compete and not embarrass the legacy you have. Oh, uh, well, you know, buddy, I say this to you, and I'm telling you, I'm 44 years old, and as to me, I still feel I'm in my prime. You know, I still have all my hair. <laughs> I'm not big fat. I keep myself in shape. I work hard. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's like on independent shows. I don't do a lot of stuff, but understand the reason I don't is because the guy I'm working with, I don't trust him. You right. understand? Sure, sure. People ask me a lot of times, they go, work, man, why do you do this spot or this spot? So because I didn't have nobody there that I trusted. Right. Sure. You know? So I do it Ricky Morton's way. I show this. And I still... Explain, you know, it's like if these guys are watching, man, they, they want to do a, what, a triple suplex with a half twist. You know, I said, well, I can sell an arm ball like I'm going to electric chair. Right. <laughs> you know, I can, I can get more out of working on an arm than you guys can ever do. Right. And I said, and, and you guys stop and listen. You do all this crazy stuff. You see guys break their arms or legs all the time. And I said, at the end of the match, the only thing that people remember is the finish. Yep. Yeah. They don't, remember, exactly. the, they don't remember a drop kick you through that damn, excuse my language, in that no match. No problem. You know, uh, but I understand it, it, the business has changed so much, and it's at the point now that you know if people say if you can't fight them, join them. No, I'd rather work my independence. I like, you know, don't get me wrong. I like to go back to WCW. I like to make that good money. I was going to say you like yeah. that paycheck. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, because you don't got to worry because every two weeks it comes in the mail. Right. right. Me, I work from night to night. You know what I'm saying? Right. Sure. And, and, it, and a lot of these times it's hard to get your money. You know. These guys, they try to rip you off. Or, matter of fact, we did a show in Alexandria, Louisiana. Robert and I did not long ago. And uh, the promoter ran off all the money. Really? Oh, yeah. You see, and uh, it's hard, you know, because I depend on, you know, wrestling is not a hobby for me. It's a job. Right, right. This is what I do to feed my family. And I take it very seriously, too. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I understand I still can't fade. A lot of guys, he didn't understand that, you know. Matter of fact, I was wrestling Chesapeake Sunday night, and I was wrestling a guy by the name Pat, Pat uh, Chavis or somebody like that. And he's at, and I'm out there, he's at a bar, and I'm sitting there, so he comes up talking to me, you know. He <laughs> said, Pat, no, it's great to see you, but please, let's kayfabe a little bit, you know. Right. You know, uh, I'm, fi you know I'm, I'm fixing to turn heel on your ass. <laughs> you know, man, here I go again. We're not going to get kicked off the radio, are we? No, 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 not at all. Huh? You're not at all. Okay. <laughs> You know, I, I, it's a third heel on you, dude. I, we can't, you know, 
I said, please, just kayfabe a little bit. You know, he understood. Right. Well, a lot of guys would still respect me for that, too, you know what I'm saying? Uh, a lot of times we go to the locker room. You know, I've been, we still run Mid-Atlantic out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Have you guys heard that yet? What's that? Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard of Mid-Atlantic. Sure. Yeah, we, you know, we still do that. I, I do the booking over for them. Oh, wonderful. It, and understand, I want everybody here to understand. You say, I don't work for WCW, but I sure would like to have a job in the office because, you know, I did a angle brought Dusty Rose in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We did 30 grand independent show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had thirty thousand dollar house in the fitness show, buddy. You tell me that's no TV, right? Okay? Exactly, exactly. That's just word of mouth. Uh, we do see and accomplish. People ask me, you know, like, well, these independent shows. When I first start going to them, they don't draw but fifty or sixty people, right? But buddy, after after you work there every two weeks for a couple of months, we're drawing four and five hundred people, right? Wonder, man, don't you think something's catching on? You know, I go th- in and do my baby face thing, and I say, oh, I'll get the kids out of bye-bye, and shoot for the angle to bring Robert in. You know, at the end of, at, at the blow-off, you see what I'm saying? Yep. And we sell out. Most definitely. I mean, I, I think that at some point it's going to have to go back to, yeah. you know, old school. Yeah. Um, because there's going to be at some point, you know, that we've actually seen everything, and, well, we, and we get tired do? of high you're spots. Gonna, you're going to shoot a guy out of a cannon? I don't know. Yeah, you know? exactly, exactly. So what, what else are you going to do? And see, I understand, I, I'm from a... I'm, one thing that I could do, I know how to put people in those seats. And I wish that Eric Bischoff, and, you know, because down there, you know, you got you to understand when you get this corporate business, but it's cutthroat business. It's politics, it's cutthroat, no matter what they say. And, and you got to understand, I'm a threat to all those guys down there because they know I know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I ain't trying to pat myself on the back. I'm not, buddy. I don't want nobody else's job. I just want Ricky Morton's. Right, right. That's all I want. I like to help out. We need a lot. Go, go ahead. Go, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you know, I just want to help out. You know, that's where you go around. I don't like to go around WCW nowhere. You know, you go down there, and they think you're begging for a job, but I'm not starving to death. You know, I do good out here, but I would like to have a job with them to show them. But I've been in this business all my life. This is all I know is professional wrestling. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a brain surgeon. I'm not a lawyer. You know, I don't know how to work on computers. All I know is professional wrestling. And if I can't help this business out somewhere... Something's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Something's wrong. You know, the last time most people saw you on a national level was when you were brought into the WWF a few years back with Jim Cornette and with the NWA angle. Uh, yeah. How was that? How were you treated backstage, and what was your impressions of the WWF at that time? Well, let me tell you something. It's my man treated us great. But you got to understand, at the time, there are writers. They have writers now, so the bookers. Right. Sure. You know, in Jimmy Cornette, you know, to, to us, it, it was kind of like a rib to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But they paid me good for it. <laughs> the check's so, cleared. So who laughed? Who laughed? And who laughed? You know what right, I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And plus, when it was all over with, they still paid me for three months. Oh, really? So I got a check every week for three months. <laughs> <laughs> Can't beat that. Well, no, no. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, you know, don't get me wrong. My hat is off to this bad man. But he's a billionaire. Sure. You know, I got to work independent show tomorrow night. <laughs> you, know, you understand? <laughs> sure. He's a billionaire. But when you take the part of WCW, I mean, if they lose $100 million a year, something's wrong. Right. All right, something's wrong. So why are they, why are they still got people still there? You know, I love to go in. They said they're going to start using these uh, junior heavyweights there. I like to go in and teach them how to work. They could use that, yeah, sure. most definitely. Yeah, you know, but... Who am I going to talk to? And, you know, I, and I really wish, you know, that WCW would go back to that style. I mean, you know, I just remember the old Georgia Championship Wrestling days and the old NWA days. Yeah. And I was much more intrigued by that than anything that the WWF had to offer. And they, they were giving me Doink the Clown. You, oh, know? Yeah. Yep. you know, NWA was giving me hour-long matches that I didn't know, you know, and, and yeah. a, a, that the belt could change. On any given night, I remember like watching a Saturday night show oh, yeah. and saying, "Okay, you know." And well, they uh, lost the belt on Thursday. Now they're going to defend it tonight. Wow. And going, wait, wait a minute! I have to go down to the gardens and see the show. Then I, I don't know. They might, they might actually change the belt again. Oh, yeah. the titles see, meant something because it was like a soap opera. It, exactly. And, and you told the story. You know, it's like uh, if I turn wrestling on, I could tell you everything they're going to do on that TV that night. Yep. I could tell you everything they're going to do because I've been around rash business all my life. You have to wait to pay the twenty nine ninety five on pay per view to find out, you know, the <laughs> stuff that we could have seen at every house show. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, you see. And that's, that's it. you know, and you see, I, another thing that I love in doing is I've, I've always been this way. I, I love talking to people. Right, right now, I'm talking to you. I don't even know you guys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But I like talking to you. You see, that's the same way at the matches. You know what I'm saying? 
that keep you here, that keep you backstage. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something, but see, I'm from the old school. I, I was used to work in uh, spot, back then we called them spot shows. Uh, you know, you didn't work in big arenas every night. Right. But it was fun. You know, you're out there with the people, you meet different people, you have a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, a lot of my good friends I'm in wrestling, you know. Uh, nowadays, they keep you secluded. Like something's going to really happen to you. I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> but I enjoy it. You know, uh, I, I enjoy what I do. Uh, I enjoy going to these independent shows. I enjoy working for Mike Duggar uh, down here in, Fall, in Hickory Tree, Tennessee, where you guys haven't even heard of. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because it's fun because we run there every Friday night. And every, you know, and every Friday night I'm trying to think of how I get more people in here the next week. You know what? And it works. It really, it's got it's good living off this. You know what I'm saying? Well, not only that, but I mean, isn't you know, I mean, just to know that you have the crowd in the palm of your hand and you can take them absolutely any direction that you want to go, isn't that worth absolutely more than any paycheck could ever? Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, but I mean, you know what I'm saying as, as far as as far as it's worth more than that to the knocking on your door and wanting, wanting well, out. Well, sure, you. sure. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, that's that's really why you're in. I mean, you know, yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, for that. It's worth more than that. It's like I told you before. When I go right when I walk out of the dressing room. I can tell if they want me to make them laugh. I can tell if I, they want me to make them cry, if they want to be happy or be sad. I can tell about when the music starts and when I step out that door. I can tell exactly what they want. We're talking to Ricky Morton on the Wrestling Guys on Buckeye Country 106.5. Ricky, we're going to take a break. Can you hang on the line with us? Sure will, man. All right, we're... Matter of fact, they'll get me a piece of fish. All right, get a piece of fish. <laughs> we'll talk to you again in a couple of minutes, okay? Hang on the line. All right, dude, I'll be hanging on. All right, more with Ricky Morton. Where are the Wrestling Guys? Uh, Buckeye Country 106.5. Relationships. Welcome back to the Wrestling Guys on Buckeye Country 106.5. Sean Stidham and Willie F. And joining us on the line, we continue our conversation with one half of the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Morton. And if you want to get up to date on what's going on with Ricky today, you can visit his website, Rock and Roll, that's A-N-D, Roll, RickyMorton.com. And Ricky, you've got a uh, upcoming Middle Eastern tour coming, correct? Uh, yes, we leave May the 2nd. We go out to uh, Kuwait, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Bahrain. Now, how do those kind of things... Have you ever been over there before? Oh, yeah, I sure have. You know, it's the place we do for the Pentagon. We work uh, the military bases where we're over there. Mm -hmm. And you got to understand, these uh, soldiers over there, they, they don't have no kind of entertainment. Right. They're over there fighting for our country. Uh, uh, and it's it's hard. You know, it's a lot of hard work for these guys. So there's a lot of pressure. And when we go to the matches there, buddy, I mean, buddy, they come out of the woodworks. They are, they come from, We have big, huge crowds there. I mean, matter of fact, it's about about on the bases there. Uh, except for ones that don't watch and... Uh, we have a great time over there, man. I mean, I really, I want, you know, I, if anybody's listening, I'd like to thank the Pentagon for even letting us go over there, man. It's a great pleasure, dude. Now, who else is on the show that we may know? Oh, man, yeah, a lot of good guys. We have, uh, well, last year we went with us, the Bushwhackers, uh, see Robert. We had uh, Steve Dunn, you remember, well done? Sure. Mm -hmm. Had him, Reno Regans, uh, uh, let me think here, Sergeant Pittman. Okay, Craig uh, Pittman. Andrew Bain, which is a new wrestler coming out of a, he come out of Hawaii. We've been when we was over there on, on the Middle East tour. He's a big guy. Looks like Goldberg. Real big, real big muscular though. But what a great worker. He's what potential he's got. You know what I'm saying? He's uh, gonna be good. But I think the tour we got coming up this time is gonna be uh, by, matter of fact, our stuff in the Midnight Express, uh, the Barbarian, Tatanka, uh, Bushwhackers, and that's about all I think of right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a play. But we have a great time on those tours, man. A real great time. Let me tell you a story. Last year we went over the Middle East, right? I don't know if you guys ever heard of a place called Diego Garcia. Uh, no. No, okay. Well, it's a little bitty island about a thousand miles off the coast of India, out in the Indian Ocean. And uh, you fly there from, like, Singapore. It's a 22-hour flight. And you're on a military plane. We fly in there and just do one show. And you got to understand this island. You can throw a rock from end to end. But we fly in there and our plane breaks down. <laughs> So you got to understand, it's another 22-hour flight to bring the part in, but the plane don't leave for two days. <laughs> so they, they fly the part in for two days, it's the wrong part. Oh, now, guys, we're stuck on this island. You, you watch the movie Groundhog Day? Yes. yes. But I was, in, I was in that movie. Because there, you know, all the TV shows are taped. You watch the same thing every day for a week. <laughs> uh, it's so hot outside that you can't go, you know. You go to the pool and you jump in the pool, it's like jumping in hot bath water. Uh, 
you know, you'll go, you know, they entertain you like they will take you deep sea fishing, but before you get off the dock, you burn up. <laughs> right. You know, and, and, uh, I'm looking, now we're stuck there for two weeks, man. That's 12 days we were there. And uh, a lot of the guys what used to be away from home, that was a little, I, I enjoyed myself because, you know, it's a British island. And uh, you had a, uh, you, you British pubs, you know, it had little bars on it all the way around. <laughs> and, uh, understand, uh, we got stuck there for 12 days, so everything was comped. Good. I did. I, uh, I did my damage to them. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's it like? Where, where do you, when you go to on these shows? When you're in a place like that, do you do you wrestle inside an armory or do they have you actually outside? Oh, Saudi way with great outside. You know, it never rains there. Oh, you know? wow. I, I'm just trying to think of wrestling in that kind of heat. It's got to be a, a, a we challenge. Wrestle, most we wrestle in hangers a lot, but you know, but you got to understand when it's real hot like that, when the sun goes down, it get. I mean, even if it gets down to like 85, 90 degrees, it's freezing because you've been out there in 110 degree weather all day. You see right. what I'm saying? The temperature's done drop 25 degrees. Wow. You see? So you got to understand, even outside, when it gets down to 85 degrees, you're, I mean, you got to chill on you, Buzz, because you used to be that real hot all day. I mean, your, but, your, your cardio's got to be amazing to be able to yeah. go into that heat for that long. Well, buddy, I, I try to find an air conditioning in the shade. Sure. You, you know, with a big glass of iced tea or something somewhere. But, but we, you know, you get used to it. Uh, people ask me all the time how to do all this traveling. I've been doing it all my life, you know. Right. I, I'm used to it. I've got, well, there goes my little girl through here, man. Everybody out there wants to know, I have a family. <laughs> <laughs> I've got people, you know, I, I did an interview for a, uh, a magazine not long ago. They asked me, they said, what do you do in your spare time? Well, you know, I could sit there and lie to them and tell them that I'm fish <laughs> and I'm out here a lot, but I have three little children. My wife's expecting our fourth one. Congratulations. So, do you know what I do in my spare time? Diapers. I change diapers. <laughs> I wash dishes. I run to the grocery store. I run back. I'm at school. I'm at ball practice. Okay, that's the life of the <laughs> You're Mr. That's, Mom. That's the true fact there. <laughs> We're uh, talking... We're talking with Ricky Morton from the Rock and Roll Express on the Wrestling Guys on Buckeye Country 106.5. Give us an update on Robert Gibson. He's not as uh, as active on the indie circuit as you are. Well, he is sort of, but, uh, you know, up here, I, I live in, uh, right outside of Bristol, Tennessee, Bristol, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And this is independent galore, if anybody wants to know. Now, you got Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, West Virginia, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. They're all right here together. And they, either which way I go, they're there. So it... See, well, Robert living way down in Alabama and Florida, you know, it's a long way for him to travel to come up here. Now, when I do the big blow-offs and bring him in, it's cool. But, you know, he still does his down around Georgia and Florida. He still works a lot, too. He had a wrestling store in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. But, uh, you know, they had the, the tornadoes and stuff come through there and wiped all that stuff out. Mm. But, you know, he's, he, he, he still does his independent circuits. Yeah, he does a lot, too. But there's a lot more than you think he does, you know. Because he rubbers the same boat I am. All we know is wrestling. You know? Right. And, you know, the other day I was going through, uh, I have most of the Starcades on tape, and, uh, you know, the matches you had with, you know, the Midnight Express and the Scaffold match and the match yeah. with the Steel Cage and the Russians. Out of all that time, are, let's just go ahead and say your entire career, is there any one match or any one moment which you just look at and say, that's my favorite, that's the one I'm most proud of? Well, the one I'm most proud of, is see, you got to understand this, is, is, is the first night that Dusty brought us in, to NWA. It was in Shelby, North Carolina. That's when we beat the Russians for the belts. It was an hour time limit on TV. We went like 56 minutes. And see, we never have ever worked with Ivan or Crusher Khrushchev. We come in from Louisiana because you don't know, understand back then your tapes were uh, uh, two weeks behind. So they brought us in right into Shelby, North Carolina, put all, put all this stuff on our shoulders this is going to be the tag team to go with. And you know what? Robert Gibson and I filled it to the top. We went to that ring with Ivan and Crusher. And, brother, we rocked that house. And the finish that Dusty wanted. See, you got to understand, back then, the bookers, it, it's hard to make the guys realize what kind of finish he wanted. And we pulled it off. And that's one of, one of the main successes of getting over is because we cut. That's, that's called working. You understand? We come in and done that, buddy. We accomplished that. That was our first night in. After I done drove from Louisiana to Charlotte, North Carolina, I got there like 4 o'clock in the afternoon and went out there in Shelby, North Carolina, which you got to understand is probably 120 degrees in that building in the middle of summer because it was sold out. And we did that with all those TV lights on you. And you have an hour TV show, we went like 56 minutes and didn't wow. finish. That's, that's the match that sticks out with us because 
that's what really got us over. We're talking with Ricky Morton. Ricky, it's been a great pleasure to have you on. My partner, Willie, he was a big Midnight Express fan. He didn't know if he was going to be able to go through this interview or not, but I think he did a good job. Yeah, I was a bit, well. I, I had to well, admit, great, man, but you know what? <laughs> Willie, I'm a great Midnight Express fan, too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I've got to say this, Bobby Eaton's the best worker in the business. But I absolutely, you know, I, I've heard that time and time again. But then again, you know, if 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 there was no, you know, Rock and Roll Express, there'd been nothing for the Midnight Express to really well, go guys, after. I so, it very much. so very much. Anytime so. you guys want to call me back, we can talk. I told you when we had a big winter storm up here. If you if you're outside, you got to climb a tree and use the bathroom. <laughs> other than that, you know, it, it's cold up here. I, I can hear my babies back here screaming. But you got some diapers to change, my friend. Well, no, my mama, mama's got them locked up right now. So I can get rid of you, but. Well, definitely uh, best. I really appreciate you guys and all the fans out there, too. Uh, you still remember Rock and Roll Express. We're from the old school. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? And I really do wish that there was more yeah. old school mentality going on right we now. We sacrificed our whole career for what this business is today. You know, a lot of us, some of us won, some of us lost, you know. But I feel very happy at what, what I do have and what I have learned in this business. And uh, whoever around independent shows, I love for y'all to come out to us. Absolutely. Absolutely. We will take All you right. up on that, and uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to come back up here in Ohio soon. Cool, man. Y'all guys take care, and God bless you, man. Uh, you too, Ricky. Thank, thank, you, thank Ricky. you very much. Ricky yep. Morton from the Rock and Bye -bye. Roll Express. That was a cool thing. <laughs> That was, Rock and Roll Express was a big tag, favorite tag team of mine back in the 80s. So. See, I, I, I was still always, I was always the bad guy. So I was always with, you know, Midnight Express, Jim Cornette, Ric Flair. You know, I never got into the Russians, though. Really? Well, that was crossing the line. <laughs> You had your priorities. You were an American. I was guy. American. I liked him, yeah. How exactly. in the hell can a Russian win the U.S. <laughs> title? That just can't be. But at the uh, same, but at the same time, I, I still respected them now, and I have to admit, I you know, I did root for the Russians. So you know, like if they're going up against somebody, they're like, yeah, there you go. And so. then when Nikita turned babyface and team with Dusty, or oh, I hated that. <laughs> we when we come back, your phone calls four five seven one zero six five. We are the wrestling guys on Buckeye Country one zero six point five. Welcome back to the Wrestling Guys, Buckeye Country 106.5, Sean Stidham and Willie F. And uh, if, you just join, if you're just joining us, you missed Ricky Morton, who was one of, we, he was on for what, almost 45 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Very candid, and I know BJ's out there getting the report typed up right now. <laughs> so, getting, uh, and getting writer's cramp. Yes, and also uh, about a few minutes ago, WWF.com posted that Al Snow has agreed to a new extension with the World Wrestling Federation, and Al says it's going to be the last contract of his career. Al is going to join us in about 20 minutes to uh, talk about How cool that. is that? That is very cool. So uh, we're going to talk to Al Snow a little bit later on. 457-1065 is our phone number, and get you up to speed on a couple of things. And you mentioned this, Willie. Uh, Can we you know, we got to say this again, too. Because, well, I mean, we still have this. We I do. Promise. You know what? We should mention this again. Dana from Papa John's, of course, he's no stranger to this show, uh, stopped by, and they have a brand new uh, Papa's it, Choice. It's Papa's Choice, yes. right. For up to five toppings, large pizza, nine ninety nine. You can't beat that with a stick. No. And if you did, well, you probably wouldn't want to eat the pizza after that. You know what? It's so good. You I would. wouldn't even eat it. I even, even after you've eaten it with a stick. Just, yes. Wow, that's amazing. 294 Papa is the phone number. And again, Dana, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. You mentioned this in the news report about the New York Post reporting that <laughs> Linda McMahon said the WWF is considering bailing out of the XFL. Where does it say that? Now, and, and I read the quote. And now, where, you, will you tell me at what point does it say that in that quote? I, I don't see it either. <laughs> that's, that's what I can't figure out. Uh, you know, Are they just taking stuff and twisting it now? The quote at whim? From, the quote from Linda is, I think we have to evaluate the viability of the product in the marketplace. It takes time to build a brand. It takes time to build player awareness. It takes time to develop the stars. It sounds like it takes time. It takes time. Not that we're bailing out, but, it, you know, it's going to take time for this to catch on. Now, the problem that could be with the XFL is a number of people are saying that NBC is looking to bail out after this year right. as far as a Saturday night prime time time slot. Right. You could have them moving to a Saturday afternoon slot, which is I still going to be good. I think that would be great. I think they, you know. I, I think, think that's what they help them Yeah, but see what the problem is, though, and what I hear the problem is, you know, is that, I mean, we're going into, uh, we're going into golf season right now. And actually, I guess there's a lot of, uh, the, the, they think that, they don't think that the golf would actually draw as much as, they, they think, actually think that the XFL would draw better than the golf. Really? Well, yes. But, but at the same point, they don't want to chance that right now. 
I, you can understand that. And the ratings continue to plummet for the XFL. And I guess the ads have went from a hundred thousand dollars per spot down to sixty thousand per spot. So wow, that's... Uh, they're certainly having their uh, having their growing pain. But you know, at the same time, they are doing incredibly well in the stadiums. I actually know a guy who is is. He is one of the pep band. I, at, at, really, for uh, he works down at Disney. He's a good friend of mine. I went to college mm -hmm. with him, and I didn't know he did this. He's actually the uh, the one of the pep band for the Orlando Range. It's just him and another guy, the which X which kind of shows you <laughs> how the XFL is doing. But at the same time, he says that that crowd is consistently hyped. And it, that place is consistently sold out. Well, you watch the games on TV, and you can <clears throat> see how into it the crowd is. Oh, and, definitely. Right. And the other thing, too, the XFL, as bad as the TV ratings are right now, they are going to turn a profit. Yeah. Which is incredible for an organization in its first, first year. First year, exactly. They are going to make a profit as long as the ratings don't absolutely die any further. Right. They're going to do okay. And I, unfortunately, I think that's what everyone's beating up. You know, everyone is, is totally beating up. Oh, well, this is the worst live sporting event ever in prime time. Well, you know what? There's not a lot of live sporting events in prime time yeah. to begin with. Now, I, will this. <laughs> I will that's say true. this. I will say this. What has not looked good for the XFL lately, number one, the idea that they're going to bring in teenagers. Yes. starting at 19 years old, that are not academically qualified to make it in college. Right. That is a bad move. That's a bad PR move any way you look at it. Any way you look at it. The idea when the NBA started bringing in teenagers, with the exception of maybe Kobe Bryant and Kevin Garnett, mm -hmm. it's been a flop. It's been yep. a disaster. It has hurt the game. It has hurt the fundamentals. And I'm sure it would hurt the XFL even further. And an image, uh, an image disaster is not what they need right now. Right. The other thing, too, with the XFL is that they seem to be changing their rules every week. It seems That's like true. every week, okay, now this is a new rule. Now you can't touch the receiver downfield. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and so they're flip-flopping on a lot of things. And the entire Rusty Tillman, Jesse Ventura thing, that's old. Uh, oh, very much so. I mean, it's, it's so old to the point that I'm going, okay, well, I know the New York hitmen are going to be in every single game on Saturday night now. Right. You know, just so we can keep seeing the so-called feud that is, is absolutely ridiculous, continue. It's a few that nobody cares about. Well, yeah. It's very interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and take a call. Let's go to line one and talk to Kid Chuck. Chuck, how are you? First of all, I'd like to say that interview was classic. That's well, good radio. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I mean, that, that was very cool for us, too, to just be able to talk to him. Right. Um, I just... Well, I wanted to talk about Paul Heyman and how he did on Monday. I thought yeah. he did a pretty good job other than some of the more 80s type heel sounding announcing. I thought it was pretty good. But, did, I mean, did you think a lot of it was a work, though, just by listening to him? I mean, I really don't see, I don't see McMahon being able to go, you know, or, or saying, hey, you know, uh, you know, go ahead and say whatever you want. Go ahead and slam TNN like you did in the beginning. Go ahead and slam Jerry Lawler, which I really don't see. I mean, if you're basically letting the guy go and basically the guy has quit your organization, you really don't talk about him after he's gone. Right. Well, I, I agree with what you're saying there, but I mean, as far as him slamming TNN, they were on TNN for a year, and every storyline they did on ECW slammed TNN. Yeah, but that's one of the reasons uh, that TNN didn't want him around anymore, too. You know, you got to know Paul Heyman. <laughs> Love the idea, though. Is go about going and slamming TNN? Oh, most definitely on prime time Monday night. You know, Heyman was jacked about that. <laughs> from what we understand, too, from the guys backstage, Heyman came across very professionally. Went up to everybody, shook their hand, introduced himself, and you know they didn't really say, "Okay, this is a new member of the WWF team," but they basically he basically made it clear that he's going to be around for a while. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, and what I think is he do he's doing right now is. You know, I've heard he doesn't really want to be on the announcing team. He doesn't want that spot at all. But he wants to be a corporate guy. He wants to show him that he's willing to do absolutely anything to, to stay around and have a job. And so that's one of the reasons he's doing it. Do you think the guys like a Jerry Leonard and Justin Crowe are going to get more of a fair shake now than they would have gotten had he not been there? I think it's going to be real interesting. I mean, if he takes over that, you know, that booking. Now, you got to understand, McMahon has final say on what goes on in that show. And what they do is they have, like, a big production meeting before they either do a Raw, you know, or do a SmackDown. And that, what was it? It was, like, at, you know, noon or 1 o'clock before they, you know. And I, at that point, you know, they basically have to submit 
what they're going to do that night, and Vince right. has to approve it. Now, if Vince doesn't like the way that it's going to go, he's going to shut something down. And I don't think Heyman's going to be able to, you know, slip that kind of stuff by. You know, one thing we've heard is that Heyman was the guy behind the Vince and Trish uh, storyline this past Monday. And I think a lot of what, uh, maybe why that was the first angle that Heyman was involved with was maybe Vince McMahon's choosing so that if any of the guys came back and said, hey, Vince, we don't want to do this. Uh, Paul Heyman, come on. I mean, you know, he had one company run into the ground. Vince can come back and say, no, hey, I did it. You know, I did his storyline. There's no problem with it. So, hey, Kid Check, appreciate the phone call. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the Celebrity Hotline now. And joining us from Buckeye Country 106.5, it is Karen Kelly in the Phil Mornings. The Celebrity Hotline. I like that. The Celebrity Hotline. <laughs> Hi, Sean Honey Bunny. How are you? Honey Bunny. Honey Bunny. Uh oh. I hear, I hear we have a new member of the family that I haven't met yet. Willie F. That's that's right. Hi, Karen. How are you? Uh, hello. How are you? Good. Thank you. And um, I'm calling you tonight because I I need you guys to promote something for me. Sure. Guess what I'm hosting tonight? What are you hosting tonight? Ladies Night Out. Really? At Ned Pepper's downtown, right there in the Oregon District. On so, like, we can wave to you from here. You can wave to me from there. That and, is cool. And here's the incentive, ladies. Girls drink free all night long. You gotta like that. And guys, what a great opportunity. <laughs> I mean, come on. You can offer to buy a girl a drink. You don't have to pay for it. <laughs> that is a great thing. Willie, I know you're on all for that. You know what? That's the best type of drink to offer somebody. <laughs> well, one thing guys have to remember is ladies' night's really for guys. It's not for ladies. Well, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> so I'm going to be at Ned Pepper's tonight, and uh, I'll be there till midnight, if you can believe that. And uh, I think I'm just going to, like, stay up and then do the morning show after that. <laughs> You can just come over here and bring a sleeping bag, crawl into the I studio. I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Just do it like an experiment, you know, <laughs> like the, the, you're gonna actually going to, you know, just stay up all night. See and just how see late how they... I could stay up? Exactly. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> Maybe I could just, you know, but well, never mind, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I wanted to tell you guys about is uh, Friday night, we're having a, another fundraiser for the marathon I'm running for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. It's uh, in Piqua there, and I think... Um, the, the notes are right up there on the, on the board. It's at a steakhouse called Don's Two Steakhouse. It's an after-work party. And then there's a band playing all night long until midnight. And uh, all the proceeds go to benefit the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. Now, explain this a little bit because some of our listeners may not know. Day and, you don't, and you don't get any... Well, uh, I'm, I, first of all, let me preface this by saying I hate running, <laughs> but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, I have a little hero. Her name is Leah. She's nine years old, and she has Hodgkin's lymphoma, and she is my inspiration for running this 26.2-mile marathon, which is redundant. All marathons are that long. I'm running the Rock and Roll Marathon in San Diego, which means I get to run through SeaWorld. <laughs> and uh, I am required to raise uh, about $3,000. And all the proceeds, every little penny, goes to benefit, uh, help fight blood-related uh, cancers for leukemia and lymphoma. It's called Team and Training. So uh, there you go. I'm doing something totally not so crazy, but I need all my listeners' help. And I figure, what a better way to do it than to throw a party and have everybody come. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's a great thing and great effort on your part. And again, you're going to be at Ned Pepper's till midnight tonight, right? Ned Pepper's till midnight tonight. Don Stu's Steakhouse in Piqua on Friday night. All right, Karen. We'll listen to you in the morning. Thanks a lot, guys. You guys have a great show. Thank you very thank much. You Karen, in. Thank you. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Karen <laughs> Kelly from the mornings here at Buckeye Country 106.5. And, again, you can get more details about the fundraisers and everything else she's doing at the website, Buckeye1065.com. And, it, and that's a great story, too. Absolutely. And it's for a great cause. I, I, you know, I encourage all of our listeners, too. You know, to please support that cause. Absolutely. 457-1065 is the number. Quickly, let's go back to the phone lines and talk to Andy from Kettering. Andy, how are you? Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Um, first off, it's 100 show. Remember that. Uh, you know, I, I, never, I didn't go back and count it, but I, I'll take your word for it that it is our 100th show. Thank you. <laughs> hey, can I, uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. If this is the 100th show, does that mean, like, in two weeks, that's the two-year anniversary? Uh, you know what? Actually, I was looking at the calendar the other day. <laughs> I think the two years come and gone. Because we started in no, February wait. of 99. Wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, wait. There's 52 weeks in a year. Right. Thank you very much. If this is the 100th show... I thought you guys have missed a few weeks. We had a couple, we had a couple no, that, weeks that's off right. because of the World Series. All right, and a couple okay. Other things you where can we have, have we were preempted. that time off, though, and still have a count. 
Not really, no. Okay. But uh, <laughs> nice try, Julie. Appreciate that. No, but we I have. Give a, up. I yeah, I think actually the two years come and gone because um, the the way I remember is that we started our show about a week or two before February Fracas. Uh, oh which is yeah, UCW, one of UCW's right, big shows. Right. Okay. And so we started a couple of weeks before that. Uh, Independent Icon called, and you called in our first show. I remember that. Yeah. So uh, did. we did that, and that was a lot of fun. So that's how we kind of remember that. I was such a mark. <laughs> and you still are. You still are. <laughs> how I clawed my way up. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the, I remember the classic thing is, uh, you know, and and going back, you know, most of the time. And I, I don't mean this as, as bragging or anything else, yeah. but most of the time we can get into shows for free. Uh, they call oh, up and yeah. say, you know, you can come into shows or whatever. And I remember Willie called and invited us, uh, Marty and myself, to the first show. Or That's to the right. Show. And I, I was like saying, the first one doing that one. Yeah, right? yeah. And I remember yeah. saying, is it free? And he goes, um... Of course, Willie would be the only guy... You know, Willie, come on the show, free publicity, all yeah, this exactly. other stuff. Yeah, exactly. be like, uh, uh, I, don't I don't know, guys. Uh, you have to understand, Raj yeah. is a very big man. <laughs> <laughs> and and I've seen Raj, I've, I've talked to Raj when he's angry. He hasn't, he's never been angry at me. Well, that's good. But yeah, I've, no, I, but, uh, angry. a little bit, yeah, he has. <laughs> has he really? k -fabe. Storyline, yes, he has. Oh. There you go, k I, well, a little no, bit. I, we had Ricky Morton on, we have to k a little what? bit now and... But we're like buddies now I and know, everything. Because, you know, Suck up. it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> but, but you know, I, so I didn't know, you know. I was still, I was still young. I was, I was green. <laughs> you I was were green? I was green and in the business. And what are you now? Well, now he's, I'm, now he's a wrestling guy. He's behind I'm, the microphone. I'm more That's like, true. He's no, grown. I'm more like an aqua. <laughs> an amoeba. <laughs> That's, an amoeba. That's it. That's an amoeba term. is exactly what Willie. That's is. it. That's a good. That's a good description. <laughs> Thank you. Andy, right. what else you want to talk about? Uh, first, can I plug the website real quick? Hurry up. Uh, www.penfalls.com. Okay. Okay. And I'm wondering if you guys see Brian Christopher maybe getting you know punished or something because you know. It's not, not at all. No, I think that um, Brian Christopher. I don't know what his contract status is. If his dad ends up going to WCW, and Brian really wants to go. Uh, like Vince McMahon did with Davey Boy Smith and Jim Neihart with Bret Hart to WCW, I think he would give Brian a release. I don't think Brian would do that just because he never had he'd... anything else that put him as over as being one half of Too Cool. Yeah, most definitely. All right, thanks for that, guys. Andy, appreciate the phone call. Should we, we are... do this? Are we going to at least at least announce that if we're not going to do it this week, we have to at least announce that we're going to do it next week? So, right. that, so that people can at least plan for it. Yes, next week, what we're going to do okay. here on the program, uh, we are going to give away tickets for the Grand Victoria Casino Show uh, in Rising Sun, and uh, it's going to feature Kane yes. against Leviathan. Right. It's Leviathan and Leviathan. Actually, wait a minute. You know what, Sean? You had the card with you. Wait, yes, I You did. are prepared. Anyway, uh, the I show... Almost, I almost forgot that I had it. The show is Friday, March 16th, and your tickets that you, you win, or that you buy, however you want to do it, they include your boarding pass. So That's after the exactly show, right. and the nice thing about these shows, they're a nice, neat, tidy package. Most so definitely. So if you're worried about staying late or whatever, the show oh, has to be over by 9 or 9.30. I think it's 9.30. Okay. And then you can go right on the boat, gamble for an hour or two, and then come back home. Or, even better, they have a hotel there, yeah. and you can just stay at the hotel and they can make a weekend of it. Yeah, I'm listen like, to that. Ooh la la. I, might, I, I think I think you know I might actually go down and I might stay at the hotel this time too. Yes, I might. You're not already there. No comment. Yeah, I might. Anyway, anyway here's I, I do have right the card. Best. I ahead. do have the card. Okay. This is on official official HWA letterhead. Yes. It is Chip Fairway and Nigel McGuinness versus B.J. Whitmer and J.R. Ryder. Now J.R. Ryder, he was just on. He had a dark match on Raw. Yep. Um, and he lost to Billy Gunn, but we won't go there. <laughs> and the Jablonski... You have to pay your due somewhere. You do. And losing to Billy Gunn is a good way to start. The Jablonskis versus Cody Hawk and Matt Anthony McMurphy, the taxi driver. You have Pepper Parks versus Matt Stryker. I guess this is for the vacant now cruiserweight belt. The, the, the cruiserweight belt, the HW cruiserweight belt, held for how many times by Shark Boy. Well Shark Boy it's and gone. Then Rory Fox took it and then dropped it back to Shark Boy. And you know why that it's you know why that's vacant? Because Shark Boy Shark Boy is the heavyweight champion with HWA right now and he will be taking on a good his good friend too, Ray Steele. And by so the way, Shark Boy, Shark Boy will be on the program with us here next week. Oh, all right. And also you have 
from OVW, which is Cornette's promotion and also a WWF developmental deal. The Minnesota Stretching Crew, which is uh, Brock Lesnar and Benjamin, but they didn't write Benjamin's first name. I knew, I knew, I knew <laughs> Lesnar, but I didn't. Versus the Disciples of Sin, which is BJ Payne and Damian, both of them with WWF deals. And then, of course, in the main event, you have Kane versus Leviathan. Should be a great time. Uh, the bell time for that is at, uh, I believe, 7.30. And details online, hwaonline.com. Al Snow, when we come back to the Wrestling Guys. On Buckeye Country 106.5. Welcome back to the Wrestling Guys, Buckeye Country 106.5. Sean Stidham along with Willie F. And joining us on the Celebrity Hotline tonight, Al Snow, one of our most favorite guests, I think, in the history of this program. And WWF.com reporting that Al has signed a new four-year deal. So, Al, congratulations to you. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Party time! So now you got the new deal, the new money. What's the first thing you're going to run out and buy? Uh, first thing I'm going to run out and buy... Oh, gosh. Uh, I don't think we can really discuss that on the air, can we? Uh, we can discuss anything you want. Oh, I know. Uh, He's going to buy more guys midgets, I think. willing to let me discuss whatever I want, but the FCC has certain rules <laughs> for broadcasting in America. Now, I know that uh, you've been in negotiations for some time with the, with the group, and you said uh, that this is going to be basically probably your last contract. I would imagine, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm good, but uh, I'm not immortal, so... I'm not bulletproof, for God's sake. <laughs> now, and also, you mentioned that you're maybe looking at maybe getting into some other forms of entertainment. What sure, kind of other being, form? You know, We're not talking, you know, dancing on a pole or something or nothing like that, right? Well, hey, the pasties fit. Do it. <laughs> maybe that's what you could buy, a new set of pasties. Uh, yeah, or extra large nipples. Well, extra see, well, see, the interesting thing is, like, you know, the, one of the midgets who was on Pod, you yes. know, now I know Pod. And you know he was on uh, with, on Raw with with Al, and actually, really, Pat, I don't know. I didn't. You know, you didn't see that segment. I, I know that my guys, the midgets I have, they're named Vito the Finger and oh, I'm sorry. Knuckles. <laughs> but but I, I I know that one of them supposedly also books for Jerry Springer. Oh really? So see, you might have it in there. Hey, there you go. You know, Springer Springer's kind of getting up there in age. Yeah. And he may have you know he may have to step down, and that's yeah. another Ohio guy. Yeah. He's you a being an Ohio guy. Tooth. Yeah. You can move right in. I, I could slide right in there. I think you would be perfect. I, well, I don't know if I'd be perfect, but, uh, you know, because some of the guests that I've seen, like, uh, was flipping through the channels while I was at the uh, the restaurant last week, the WWF restaurant, and uh, they have a uh, TV in the green room, so I was watching the old Jerry Springer show, basically to get kind of psyched up for the auditions for Tough Enough, you know. And, um, uh, you know, this lady used the word toothbrush to a new level. I mean, <laughs> most, most of us in America have teeth brushes. She had a toothbrush, which is basically all she had left in her head. Now, I want you to be honest with us for something, because we have Me? yet... Yes, if you don't of mind. Of course I will be. With you guys? We, we have yet to go to New York and taste WWF New York as far as the restaurant. and the, How's the food at WWF New York? Honestly, it is really good. Really? Um, yeah, because I was there hosting Raw on Monday. I went back on my own voluntarily on Tuesday. <laughs> not at gunpoint. <laughs> which is surprising that you'd be in Times Square and not be at gunpoint. At some <laughs> but now, wait a minute. You are a WWF superstar. You should get a certain discount or you get your food comp, don't you? Oh, I get that gratis. Okay, so that's why you went back. Well, no, actually I went back because it was. It, I went to TGI Fridays there in Times Square earlier in the day. And not only was it terrible... But it, um, but because thank God it's Friday. God, thank God I didn't have to eat that again. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, but it cost a lot, and the service was terrible. So. Hold on, uh, Fridays is not a sponsor of this program, are they? Well, I, okay, well, I hope for your sake. Uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, we're okay, Al. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can you can do that. Just let me tell you something. The funny hats and the nice red and white striped shirts don't make up for the food. <laughs> it ain't happening. And, and now, you're, of course, you, uh, we, we see on Monday, and uh, we're going to see more of it this Thursday on SmackDown. Yep. You're trying to become Commissioner Snow. Yes, I am. Now, what qualifications? Doesn't that sound like a respectable title? I think it does. It sounds a lot better than the ones the police have given me. I just, I, I personally think the shirts are a gold mine waiting to happen. <laughs> I think so. That and the buttons. The buttons have become a very popular item, especially when I'm flinging them at a high rate of speed. <laughs> <laughs> The idea of a pointed object being thrown and people screaming for it to be thrown at them is just incredible to me. Because <laughs> there is a sharp implement on the back of those, you know. Well, you, maybe you should take those with you in Times Square, you know, that you defend yourself from being at gunpoint. Yeah, just fire them like shurikens or something. Hey, look, it's Ninja Snow. <laughs> <laughs> 
or, or fling them at TJI, uh, you know, TGIF uh, or TGI Fridays uh, I servers. Think that, to add, apparently, thank you very much. To add a little bit more yeah, flair. And I'll use Mr. And Tongue and Mr. Lift. Thank you very much, Al. <laughs> That's why I make the big money. I'm in broadcasting. That's why you've got the new four-year deal. That's, That's right, because right, I could talk. I'm on a week-to-week -week contract here. I tell you, thank God Corky found work after that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Al, you spent a lot of time in ECW. This past Monday, Paul Heyman was backstage. Did you get a chance to talk to him? And if you did, how was he as far as interacting with everybody? Really, I got one of those kind of chills you get, you know, like they say is somebody walking across your grave thing. But uh, <laughs> I really didn't get a, too much of a t an opportunity to speak to him. He was he was too busy hobnobbing and stuff, so really didn't get too much of a time to, uh, to uh, talk to him. Gotcha. Hey, Al, I know it's your day off. I mean, we're close and everything, you know. And, and well, okay, he how saw me close from across are the you? room. We kind of locked eyes, and there was a special magic that went between us. And that really, you know, words, when you have that kind of rapport, doesn't need to be exchanged. <laughs> Much uh, like yourself and I, just over the phone. I think we're getting... I mean, I can feel the love, the energy coming from the wrestling guys all the way up the highway. I think we're getting close to one of those FCC violations you were talking about, Al. <laughs> we're getting close to a lot of violations. <laughs> Animal <laughs> rights, uh, <laughs> you know, farming so, regulations, you name it. Uh, Al, we appreciate the time. I know it's your day You're off. You're cutting me off? What, do you want to talk more? Oh, I, I can talk. <laughs> By all means. Okay, let's go to this then. I mean, when I is the lot book of coming out? Just to get up for this. So when is on. the book coming out? When is the book coming out? We need a book from you. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I don't I, consider I assume, my life that exciting. But. I assume you've seen the latest uh, g gag, if you want to call it, Mick Foley's played on you on the back of his DVD. Uh, I heard about it, yes, yes. That was, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, uh, kind of a late, I didn't find out about it until uh, I was in Las Vegas last week and found out about it. And he was nowhere to be found. Oh, of course but, so. uh But verbally I assaulted him at the uh, Tough Enough audition on Thursday. <laughs> so. Now, how did that go? Uh, it was, uh... It was fun, but very arduous. Boy, that's a multi-syllable word for those wow. listeners again, out there. Again, again, another reason why Al gets the big that's bucks. Right. Yeah. Words like, uh, how did you say that? vocabulary. <laughs> I'm a walking thesaurus. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, for, you know, we spent about 14 hours on Wednesday and then again another 14 hours on Thursday going through people. So, you know, and it, it was it was fun to, to watch some people come in there and, and um you know, I, I respect the fact that they came and they gave it their best. And, you know, and I told them at the beginning, you know, don't let this, if you really truly want this, if it's a dream, don't let it be the be-all, end-all. You know, don't let this be the the only thing because you may fail here or, or, you know, you may not get picked, but you may go somewhere else and it may take you a little longer and who knows, you may end up, you know, achieving what you want after all. So, you know, don't by all means, by any means, uh, you know, base your, your career or your life or, anything based on my judgment alone for god's sake <laughs> now are you going to be week to week on the show are you, are you going to be the trainer for them yeah I, I think it's taz myself and uh jackie okay we'll there. yeah and um well we will be uh putting them through the paces so i was gonna say you don't actually have to live with them do you oh please i'm crazy <laughs> but i'm not totally <laughs> <laughs> can you give us an idea hey, which reminds me of a joke go for it okay a guy walks into a psychiatrist buck naked except for his wrap from head to toe in saran wrap and the psychiatrist looks up from his book and takes one look at him and goes i can see you're nuts <laughs> <laughs> anyway hey stop me i'm too fast for the room hey tip your waiters and waiters i'll be here all week anybody here from out of town <laughs> hey this lovely couple they're celebrating the anniversary all right call, big hand for them remind me to call lisa grigsby amateur night at jokers the next tuesday that's right yeah. so i think we can get you we think we can get you lined up there if you need yep. a side gig i'm just off the big week-long engagement at the akron holiday inn thank you people <laughs> <laughs> give us an idea of what the people we're going to see on tough enough some of the finalists uh what are we in for what should we you know any nutty characters like rudy from survivor anybody that's really going to stand out oh there there are definitely some uh there, you know, some definite personalities and stuff that are are going to be involved in there. Some guys that are, you know, pretty arrogant and pretty cocky. To, and there's there's a couple of there's a small guy who's he's pretty much of an instigator and a, you know, what we would call a cockoster or, or a, you know, to be uh, FCC correct. And uh, and uh, a couple girls that are pretty spunky and and uh, pretty uh, pretty fire spit fiery. I mean, they didn't back down. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they all interact because we, you know, I had a, had a school much the same situation where people lived together for seven years. 
Right. And um, I mean, they didn't all live for, together for seven years in a row, but I mean, different people in and out for eight weeks at a time. That wasn't in Waco, was it? That was, uh, uh, that no, was a no. different thing altogether. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the ATF's been hunting me ever since. <laughs> Now, when's that? When, now, Tough Enough is going to start this summer, correct? Uh, no, actually, it starts next week. Well, I mean, as far as when we will be able to see yeah, it. Yeah, when you will actually, when it will be gracing the television sets across America, it will be, uh, I think, in June. I think it will be in June. Okay. We're, we're talking with Al Snow on the Wrestling Guys at Buckeye Country 106.5. Al, four years from now, when this contract is up, you say that you think you're going to be done. You, are you, come on, you're not serious. I mean, you're still a relatively young guy. I'm 37. Okay, but... I've been doing this now. May 22nd will be 19 years. Earlier on the program, we had Ricky Morton. <laughs> Ricky Morton is 44 <laughs> years old. Yes. Now, you're 37. In four years, that'll make you 41. You could still do some shows. Uh, I could. You know, I, the thing is that I want to be in a position where, um, where I have accomplished the goals that I've set out to accomplish, made the money that I want to make, um, left some kind of lasting impression, you know, achieve some sort of immortality, even if it's the wrong kind. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I mean, even if it's just that plastic action figure that somewhere in a couple years <laughs> I could find at a garage sale for 25 cents in a box of some child's toys, then that means I've made it. Um, if it's just that, I mean, you know, uh, um, you know, I think it'll be time to move on, especially if that, that application to the uh, brain surgery goes through. If that doesn't, you know, work, I've always got NASA to fall back on in the rocket scientist thing. You know, if those fall through, then I'm I'm back to square one with Greeter at Walmart or wearing the. <laughs> I thought you were a band at Walmart. Uh, wait, we thought. I yeah, thought I, th I thought you were a band at Walmart. Oh, the dolls band at Walmart. Oh, okay. <laughs> Once I become Greeter, I'll be. Oh, okay. At Walmart. <laughs> That's right. You know. Because I'll be rolling back the prices, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm sure being on this show tonight brings you one step closer to, of course, that immortality you seek so much. Oh, I thought you were going to say come, brings you one more step closer to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could be the case, that too. That could be the case, too, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm, uh, that or governor of Ohio, I'm thinking if Jesse could do it. Lord, I could do it. <laughs> I mean, look at him. Of course, then you can parlay that into an XFL color commentary game. <laughs> Why not? I mean... You know, where do you go after your, you know, governor of Minnesota? Well, I guess apparently on sports broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's really easy to see the segue, you know. Yeah, One I qualifies see, you, know, you for the other. Apparently we've really mapped out our career. <laughs> 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 we must have missed that in high school, you know, where you went to that the whole political science course. <laughs> the whole, you know, government office work and that, you know, it doesn't quite work that way, Jesse. We start at councilman. We go from councilman to mayor, from mayor to governor, from governor. You know, it's Senate and president, not XFL commentator. Right. <laughs> cutting, through, cutting through the red tape and yeah. watching them throw the yellow flag just go so well together. Yeah, well, you know, it's colors, you know. That's colors it. And it's all we're working that color. whole scheme thing there. <laughs> Well, We're Julius, just thinking if we could just enact the same rules on the Senate floor of the state, you know, state house or something. You know, I'm thinking you would be a great politician. Oh, I think I think it would be great. Hey, any wrestler that could make a living doing this, I mean, you know, let's face it, <laughs> I parade out there every week, half naked and long underwear, with midgets. Now, <laughs> what well, you more know, you've, could you've they do to diversity. me? You've what could worked they do to dogs. me as a politician to debase me any further? That's right. <laughs> you've worked with the dogs. You've worked with. Uh, God, you had to work with Boss Man, so you know, they're right there you've done the sacrifice. We all have our crosses to bear. <laughs> <laughs> I had Steve Blackman, Captain Backdraft, as I like to call him. That too, yeah. Doesn't that. he look like G.I. Joe with Kung Fu Grip? <laughs> exactly. Yes, he does. I'm sure there are a lot of kids, uh, you know, a lot of adults out there going, oh, I remember what I used to do with G.I. Joe in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now people are saying, I know what I used to do with Al Snow in the tub. Uh, hey, they, if they're that lucky, <laughs> if I'm that lucky... <laughs> Al, we got to get. How long the big brown shark came? Oh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> With that, we got to go. Al, congratulations on the contract. Thank you. And best of luck to you. And uh, please join us again. I sure will. Thanks, Al. Take care. Of you. All right, bye bye. Al bye. Snow, uh, newly signed for the next four years in the WWF. What was that, Captain Brown? What? What was that? The exact. Backdrop. No. Back, no. The, no. The, no. The big brown shark. The big brown shark. Uh, yes. Too much. If there's anything you've learned from this program tonight, always watch out for the big brown shark. Absolutely. You're listening to The Wrestling Guys. On Buckeye Country 106.5. Would you like to
Welcome back to the Wrestling Guys at Buckeye Country 106.5. I am Sean Stidham, Willie F., Julia across the board. And if you have been listening to this show all night tonight... You better have. Ricky Morton, first hour, one half of the Rock and Roll Express. Al Snow, fresh off inking a brand new four-year deal in the WWF. And me, the rest of the show, the entire show I've been here. You have been. Actually, been the great. highlight was really Al Snow. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It, it just and, was. And the big brown log. No, no okay, the we can stop talking. He said other more interesting things than just that, okay? Uh, but big that brown shark. Shark, I'm sorry. Yeah. Why can't but you get that right? I don't because know. Because he's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Funny. Unlike things I've heard about you, my friend. Oh. Yeah, anyway. Ooh, uh, hey, this Saturday, Outlaw Championship Wrestling is back in action at the John Bryan Community Center. For details about the card, call the OCW hotline at 229-8189. And we do have five pairs of tickets to give away. So if you want to call right now at 457-1065, we will take your name and number, and you will win a pair of tickets. Go to the show this Saturday, courtesy of Outlaw Championship Wrestling. And next week, don't forget that we have HWA tickets for the Grand Victoria Casino. Friday, March 16th, Kane coming Kane to versus town. versus Leviathan, and that also includes your admission to the boat afterwards. So... Bring extra cash. And if you win next week, if you win tickets on this show, mm -hmm. and then you go on and you win big at the casino, right. we get 10%. That's right. At least. At least. 10% each or just 10%? Just 10%. We can't be greedy. No, not at all. That's fine. Anyway, uh, if you are just joining us to get you up to speed on what's happening, first of all, Al Snow has signed a brand new four-year contract with the WWF. Al said it's going to be his last contract, and that afterwards he will go on to uh, do some other things. Hold on. This is great radio. This is a, these are the this executive decisions yes. in, a, in action. Yes. Uh, hold on. What? what? Uh, really talk about something for me. i got to help Julia here for a second. No, they just want to know. I mean, can, are they going to? Yeah, yes. Gonna, they, yes. We will. Uh, they will pick them up at the, at the uh, arena. Okay. At the arena. Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, ratings are in. Raw did a 4.5. Nitro did a 2.1. So, again, the WWF continues to slide in the ratings. Rumors are floating around about the future of WCW and exactly if the deal between themselves and Fusion has fallen through because apparently Eric Bischoff was not at Nitro this past Monday. Eric Bischoff also did not attend the Tuesday booking meeting. So there's some questions now if... If, they, in fact, that they are, the deal has fallen through over the last month or so, we've heard at various times that the deal has come close to dying. But apparently, uh, you know, again, we kind of believe the deal is still going to happen. But people are a little nervous right now, and that's understandable. Linda McMahon talking about the XFL. She said that I think we have to evaluate the viability of the product in the marketplace, which leads some to believe, oh, my God, they're closing shop, that the WWF could be thinking about closing down the XFL already. I hmm. don't see that. The Japanese American Citizens League sent a letter to AOL Time Warner Chairman Steve Case regarding Ric Flair's use of the term Jap Slap during Monday's Nitro broadcast. Gary Maeda, the National Vice President for Membership, sent the letter urging WCW to stop using offensive terms on television. AOL Time Warner is broadcast all over the world, and it must show leadership, responsibility, and sensitivity of racial attitudes towards others. You know what's surprising about this to me? Out of everything that happened this past Monday... That's the thing I thought would have least got any press. <laughs> I thought for sure that Tuesday morning, different women's leagues would be up yeah. in arms over the Vince McMahon, Trish Stratus segment on Raw. And so it was surprising because the degrading of a woman and everything else. I thought that they would get a lot of heat from that. I talked to... But I it's, Vince Mc, that, it's because it's Vince McMahon. Yes. It's classic evil Mr. McMahon. And you can see the Trish Stratus word coming from five miles away on this storyline. And, and you have to understand that everyone's watching, as far as you know, with the whole racial discrimination lawsuit going up against WCW right now, that faction is already monitoring them already. So for that, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're monitoring the programming and everything else just to try to get anything else that will help their lawsuit around. Also, uh, we are still giving away tickets for OCW, 457-1065. You want a couple pairs of that for you. Julia's upset because Julia, you know, doesn't want to answer the phones, and we're making her answer the phones right now. Yeah. So, you know, she, right. she thinks that when we can step back, if the phones are ringing, I'm not going to answer. No, Julia, you have to answer the phones, all right? Okay. I'm picketing right now. Why are you picketing? I don't know. You have no right to picket. So, anyway. Uh, Jared King Lawler, very complimentary about Paul Heyman this past Monday night on Raw. 
said that he thought he would did an okay job. Yeah, and said that if anyone was a, should be upset at Heyman, it was Lawler, and he wasn't upset. No, he was. Yeah, he was very complimentary. Yes, he which, was. Which leads me to believe that it's work. You said, now you really think it's work? I think it is I don't too. Know. I th I, just, I really I, think it is. Something just stinks of a work. All right, we're Something's gonna, funny about We're going to take like a three-minute poll. We have four minutes left on the air. 457-1065. Okay. Call in now and, it, and just say work or shoot, and we'll take a quick poll. If you think the Jerry Lawler situation with the WWF is a work or a shoot. Okay. Does that What's sound fair? Shoot? Julia, <laughs> just don't turn on the microphone. Okay, just leave it. Julia, Julia, you're very bright, would be a work. You're stupid is a shoot. There you go. And, and are you Thank working, you. Julie, or shooting <laughs> on her? <laughs> well, that's what you have to decide. Yes, you can. Yeah. By the way, if you want to email the Wrestling Guys, you can do so at the Wrestling Guys at AOL.com. And we can do that on the air. And. Okay, now Julie's, Julie's getting in depth now with the callers. <laughs> There's only like three minutes. It's supposed to be rapid Julie fire. Is rapid fire. You Work go, or bang, shoot. Bang. Work, shoot. It's all. It's rapid fire. You don't have to do that, hon. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. put them on the air. We're gonna ask them yeah. work or shoot. That's how this works. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, hold on. Thank okay, this is. You want to talk about classic live radio screw ups? Uh, Sean, You're what else listening? you want to talk about? You know what, Sean? You know. Here we go. Here, go to the phones. Go to the phones. Hi, the wrestling guys. Uh, it's work. Okay, thank you. Hi, the wrestling guys. Uh, oh yeah, I think it's a sh uh, I think it's a shoot. No, we want fake callers, Julia. <laughs> yes, we would like real callers if you don't mind. Okay, put okay. them on. Okay, wrestling guys, work or shoot? Um, work. All right, all right. it's a work. So all right, right there. Now we go to another caller. Go to another call. Another caller. Another caller. <laughs> okay, then why are the phones flashing? See right there, they're flashing. Four five seven one zero six five. That's okay, Julia. Never mind. Obviously, we have tested Julia's abilities to their limit, and we found out what those are here tonight on The Wrestling I'm guys. sorry. I gave her gum, and I really shouldn't have. Yeah, it's your fault. It's your fault. There's too much there. It's okay. By the way, we do want to thank, again, Dana from Papa John stopping by with the Papa's Choice. nine ninety nine for the large five toppings. That's yeah, unbelievable. Five toppings. Unbelievable. 294 Papa is the phone number. You want to try this again, Julia? Okay. Hi, The Wrestling Guys. Work or shoot? I personally think it's a work. Oh, All right, there you go, too. Two votes for a work. Thank you very much. Let's go to the next one. All right, wrestling guys, work or shoot? Shoot. Shoot. All right, so we two have to two one. for work, two for one. We have about another 30 seconds we can take calls. Hi, the wrestling guys, work or shoot? Okay, the call got dropped. That's okay. It's all right. That's okay. That's all right. That's all fine. Right. All right. All right. Well, there you go. Two to one. It's, two to one. That's that's as scientific you know as it I gets on this think, show. I still think <laughs> I, I still think this is legitimate. I know that you know. Okay, wrestling guys, work or shoot. Hello, wrestling guys. Okay, there, there are two, so it, voting's over. Two to one. Two two to one and one just was but speechless. But I know what? I will remain in the minority. Okay. I still think this is legitimate. I don't think it's a shoot. Or, you know, you think it's a shoot. I think it's a shoot. You're right. I'm sorry. Okay. That's all right. A little, you know, the Al Snow thing and all that, you know. Well, being... That's what, that's what got worked me up, is I talking understand. to Al Snow. Yeah. And, you know, and worked yeah, us just, up, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we want to thank Ricky Morton from the Rock and Roll Express for joining Absolutely us. Absolutely great Also, interview. we want to thank uh, Al Snow for coming on the sure. program at such short notice. And we want to thank BJ Bethel, for who's doing the transcript for us tonight. And you can visit BJ online at thewrestlingpress.com. And don't forget, email Willie and myself, the wrestling... We are done. Thank you very much, everybody. We will see you next week. Later. Hello, Dayton. It's Willie F. with you right now. Sean is stuck in traffic. Listening, probably. Listening. I have a cold. You can, look, you can tell. Look, I have a whole big thing here of orange juice. Now, when have I ever brought that in here? No, orange juice. I don't Never. Think you, ever, you usually have, like, soda and exactly. something else mixed in with it, huh? No. No, this is, it's not even <laughs> no, open yet. I, no, I meant the soda. Oh, well, that's possible. But not with orange <laughs> juice. Anyway, so it's just me right now. We're waiting for Wait Sean a minute, to what get... What do you mean, just you? Oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Julia's here, too. Sixth man, wonder of the world. Sitting right across from me. You're here too. Okay. 
So, uh, tonight, I know we have uh, Ricky Morton. Ricky Morton. You mean Martin? No. <laughs> Ricky Morton, one half of the Rock and Roll Express. Ooh. Back when wrestling was really good. It's not now? Well, it's, it's good. It's good now. But, I mean, back, you know, back in the heyday of wrestling. Oh, I forgot that you're old, so. Thank you very much. And we also have uh, Dana has brought us Papa John's Pizza. Once again, so I'm sure Sean, Sean will make his way through traffic now. Yeah, he's, he's hurrying now that he heard that. But luckily, there's actually some news sitting right here in front of me, and I can actually do some news. I got that. Thank you very much. We got your uh, WCW Greed pay-per-view lineup for March 18th. The Greed pay-per-view taking place in Jacksonville, Florida at the Coliseum. You have Scott Steiner versus Diamond Dallas Page for the WCW heavyweight title. I almost guarantee that Diamond Dallas Page will lose that match. Chavo Guerrero versus Shane Helms for the WCW Cruiserweight title. You have Rick Steiner versus Booker T for the U.S. Heavyweight title. Jeff Jarrett and Ric Flair versus Dusty Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes. And Sean O'Hara and Chuck Palumbo versus Lex Luger and Buff Bagwell. And also the Cat versus Canyon. That is March 18th, the WCW Agreed pay-per-view. <laughs> you all ready for that? You're going to buy that one, aren't you? Oh, no. Okay. Linda McMahon says the WWF is considering exiting the XFL. It's been around, what, four weeks? What? Is it, is it what four is, weeks now? I like it. I'm sorry. I like it. I don't mind it either. But it, it, the New York Post reports that this morning that uh, Linda McMahon said yesterday at a media investment conference in Florida that the WWF is considering bailing out of the XFL venture after this first season. The WWF founded the league, of course, all, everyone knows, and they went into a 50-50 partnership with NBC before the first season began. And NBC has stated that it's committed to a two-year run of the XFL. However, Linda says that I think we have to evaluate the viability of the product in the marketplace, and it takes time to build a brand, it takes time to build player awareness, and it takes time to develop the stars. And obviously, they said from that hint... The for that hint. I don't, I don't know what she said in there, though. I, yeah, what hint is that? It does take time. I think we have to evaluate the viability of do the you, product in the marketplace. Do you know what? I, just, I just think the critics just want it to fail so bad. I do, too, because it's another one of those cases that every everyone wants to, everything that Vince McMahon does to ultimately mm -hmm. fail. And if I hear that the cheerleaders are scantily clad one more time, I'm going to scream. <laughs> because have you seen, like, normal cheerleaders? Some of them aren't wearing all that much more than what... Those cheerleaders are, you know what I mean? Right. That's, I mean, it's like scantily clad women. Okay, so how about the L.A. Lakers? You know, or just sometimes I know. they get pretty. I just, uh, you know, but it's, it's sad when you feel that they have to go into the cheerleaders locker room to actually get yeah, ratings. That is, and that's, that's pretty bad. Well, you think it's Saturday night. What are you doing? Most people are out. Well, it's mean, true. I mean, the, the, the Most guys are out on dates and the other ones yeah. that aren't. It, it just are probably it. really going to watch, watch, you know, scantily clad well, cheerleaders in the locker room. You're just, absolutely right. It's just that it's a bad... It saves on the Playboy channel, too. You don't, have to, you don't have to do that, then. You just watch, you know... You know, if you don't have a webcam, you can just, you know, go to the XFL now. I think uh, Sean's on the phone if we need him, so... <laughs> I think maybe on that note... That's a, that's a hint. <laughs> we, we, we well, come on. I've got, look, I've got a couple more news here, Okay. Jerry Lawler was on uh, Man Cow. I Man hate Cow. that name. Oh, oh, well, all right. He's a very popular radio I personality. Hate that name. And he said that he thought Heyman did a good job on Raw on Monday night. And uh, if anyone has a reason to knock Heyman, it's Lawler, but he didn't. He put him over. It says a lot. He said Heyman did a great job. But he said he has to walk a fine line between Heyman and Dangerously. Because counterculture Booker and Shill announcer between ECW loyalist and WWF new employee. So Jerry Lawler gives his little kudos to Paul Heyman for doing the nice, decent job on on Raw. Like what did you think? Him. Did you like him? Mm -hmm. I actually thought the first now when he first came on and he started slamming Jerry Lawler. All did I, he slam him? Well, yeah, because he said he, they talked about how Lawler got fired. And how the cat got fired. I said, this whole thing is a work. This whole thing That's is absolutely exactly made up. And this is a big That's work exactly by Paul Heyman. That's exactly what I thought. But then they came back from the first commercial, and then Heyman didn't say anything for like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And it was almost as if, hey, someone told him to shut up. And then he started warming back up as it went on. But so I don't but know. But I don't understand. It's, wouldn't they have to prove what he said before? Or at least have an idea of what he said? Because, like, I mean, you know, because I thought it was a work, too. I'm like, oh, this is just a big work, and he's not. You know what I mean? Well, I, I thought it was absolutely a huge work. But uh, I don't know. I it's guess we'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. And the Japanese American Citizen League has sent a letter to AOL Time Warner Chairman Steve Case regarding Ric Flair's use, use, use of the term Jap slap during, during Monday's Nitro broadcast. And he sent the letter urging WCW to stop using offensive terms on television. An AOL Time Warner is broadcast all over the world, and it must show leadership, responsibility, and sensitivity of racial attitudes towards each other. It's wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what, all I have to say. That's what wrestling. I say. But, um, I don't know. You know, some people, you know, we're, we're overly sensitive in these, in these uh, times and age, and we're just so politically correct now that it just makes me ill. Yeah, it makes me very sick. I hate it. Anyway, you said Sean's on the phone? Yes. Let's see what other news he has. Maybe he'll cause a wreck as he's trying to read it, too. That would be actually really cool. Hi, Sean. Well, hi, how are you? That'd be good radio. Actually, Thank Sean, <laughs> actually, Sean, I, I actually uh, wanted you to come on so I can take a nice, delicious swig of uh, orange juice. Oh, yeah, 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 I know you need a break. You know, you got five minutes of talking. Uh, go ahead and take your break. But that's all the people, that's all the listeners can take. <laughs> that's well, right. Like, that's five absolutely minutes, right. Someone else to five talk. minutes was too long. So you think, you think what I ought to do maybe is, like, cause an accident right now live on the air, get some good radio, right? That would actually be really good radio. I think <laughs> we would get, well, you know what, for the first time, you know, for the first time in a long time, we'd actually have press. Really? Yeah, on that. Very, very cool. <laughs> if you did yeah. that. Uh, for those of you that uh, are, are driving around or whatever today, uh, there is an accident on northbound 75 <laughs> right at the Springboro exit, an overturned tractor trailer. I left my office in Forest Park at 5.15. I am right now passing the Dayton Mall. It is uh, a huge backup. So uh, if you're taking that way, you may want to find another route. Can I actually that, say... That, 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 I, I need to like, beat my chest like a traffic report like on WKRP. Can I actually say that this is the very first traffic report that we've ever had on the wrestling guys? Actually, no, it's not. No, it's we've not? Actually had, we've actually had traffic reports before. Really? Ten, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. No, no I remember. Well, I, no, no, I remember that, and I also then remember that we had the weather report when we had the big Xenia tornado, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. We so, had the yes, tornado. So, see, we're full of so there is just much more to this show than meets the surface. We uh, we have much more than meets the eye. That's right. It meets the eye, yeah, not surface eye. Absolutely. Uh, not really sure if you touched on this, Willie, but one thing about the hotline is there's some current concern right now over the sale of WCW two fusion, um, because of the fact that a Eric Bischoff has not had his presence in WCW this week. Monday he was not at Nitro. Tuesday he did not attend the production meeting, which are two things that he has normally been at since we found out WCW and Fusion were going to merge together. And the other thing, too, is Fusion is no longer taking calls regarding WCW. Instead, they are referring everything back to Brad Siegel. And really? Siegel, Brad Siegel is on vacation this week. The vacation had been planned for some time. So nobody knows really what is going on. The two rumors going around the offices, and part of this is coming from Wade Keller's uh, ProWrestlingTorch.com, is that, A, the sale has fallen through, which you and I have both reported on and over the last few weeks. That's come close to happening a couple of different times Absolutely. For, for various reasons. The other, form of, the other rumor that's going around the offices right now in WCW is that the sale is complete, that Bischoff is taking a week of vacation right now because next week when the sale is officially announced, let's face it, he's not going to be able to take vacation for some time. Most definitely. And so he's getting a weekend now while he can Siegel's been planning to go on vacation for some time, and Bischoff's just trying to get some free internet press, which, by us talking about it, he's accomplished. Absolutely. So, a couple of things there to talk about. Also, some concern, I know you just talked about this with the uh, idea that some people think the Jerry Lawler, Paul Heyman situation is a word. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are feeling that, you know, either A, this is a word, or B, Vince McMahon screwed Jerry Lawler. Right. Most um, definitely. It just, sorry, seems, it, 
it just seems like, you know, that too many things fell into place so quickly. And, you know, that the whole thing with Heyman, you know, just magically being able to be on Raw yeah, see, that the next surprised week. Yeah, me. I didn't think they were going to have a, almost a permanent person right away. That but, was almost right away. But, you know, I mean, part of me thinks that it is work, but, but at the same time, there's a part of me that doesn't because we know that they've been looking to drop Memphis for so long. Correct. And now that, but then I heard that, you know, Jerry Lawler really doesn't have that much stake in Memphis anyway. Well, so why would that concern is, him? The funny thing is we've heard over the last couple of days that um, the WWF looks like they're going to give Jerry Lawler an unconditional release. And you got to think, you know, if, if this all shook out like we thought it did last week. Right. And Jerry Lawler quits on the spot, I mean, literally three hours before a television taping, that there would be some more animosity and that they would say, you know what, Jerry, screw you. You're going to sit on the sidelines for two years for doing that to us. Yeah, exactly. Instead, it seems like they're very gracious. And I know there's a friendship there between Vince and Jerry that goes back some time. But it seems like still they're being very gracious in telling Jerry Lawler, you know what, we'll give you a release. You but can go to, off and go to WCW. You yeah. can go do your independence. Go do whatever you want to do. That seems a little odd if this was not pre-contrived. It, it, it really does because I don't. Vince McMahon has never done that before to absolutely anyone. I mean, can you name any time that Vince McMahon has just come out and said, okay, you know, here's your unconditional release. Go ahead. You know, go to the competition. Sending, you know, probably the, one of the most recognized personalities in the WWF over to the competition. You know, well, I mean, does that make any sense? Well, I tell you what, it would make sense if it happened if, if, if it happened differently last week. If Jerry Lawler had not tried to play chicken with Vince McMahon, and this was just a situation where Jerry went to Vince and said, you know what, Vince, I'm burned out here. I, I really want to go. I, I really want to do this. I think maybe Vince would do that. I really right. do. But whenever it's a situation where a guy just walks out, um, I have a hard time buying that Vince would give him an unconditional release if Vince actually didn't do things to force his hand, so to speak. And it, what I can't figure out, too, is, you know, Jerry Lawler saying, I mean, there's that report still out there that he didn't have a contract, that right. he hadn't signed his contract. In fact, he even said himself that he well, never sent that back. So well, how is the WWF able to give him a release on a contract that was never signed? Well, apparently what that was was an extension to his current deal. And his current um, deal runs what, like two more years? His current deal runs two more years. What he was sent was an extension, which would take it two or three more years on to that, so essentially making him an employee for the next five years. And that is apparently what Jerry Lawler didn't sign. But Jerry Lawler has come out, and, and he told Jim Ross. When Jim Ross uh, originally told him last week that, you know, we're going to have to let Stacey go, he made the comment to Jr. I can be on another channel next Monday night. Right, exactly. So, you know, we really don't know all the facts behind the case yet, and I'm sure that uh, over the next week or two um, we're going to find out, especially uh, if the WWE sales announced as being official, I'm sure we'll find out then for sure because you know that Eric Bischoff would love to get Jerry Lawler. I was shocked, honestly, even though we know Bischoff is kind of uh, handcuffed. Yes. Sean, do, do you hear the music playing? Oh, I'm sorry. I can't hear that. That's okay. We'll talk about this when you get in. <laughs> well, okay. I should be in the studio when we come back. All right. Well, that's all right then. Then, then you know, this is like a cliffhanger. <laughs> all right. You're listening to The Wrestling Guys on Buckeye Country 106.5. Come back to the Tag Team Champions. Come back to the Wrestling Guys radio show. I'm Willie F. We are anxiously awaiting Sean Stidman. Stidman. Stidham. That's real good. It was the orange that's juice. That's real good. I got some pulp. I actually swallowed some pulp as I was drinking So you were that. chewing your uh, OJ then. I was chewing my OJ. It was fine OJ. Anyway. Oh, man. Sean, hurry up. <laughs> Papa John's, graciously, yeah, Dana, yeah. the Papa John's pizza guy. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Awesome. Out of the kindness of his own heart, out of just love for this show delivered us some pizza yeah. and we want to thank them and of course you can order Papa John's pizza from Papa John's at 294-7272 and right now they're having their um, <laughs> large right. up to five toppings wow their Papa's Choice for nine ninety nine. that's a lot of pizza that's a lot of toppings that's a lot of pizza 
A pizza. lot of pizza. A lot of pizza. <laughs> for, okay. For $9.99. <laughs> so give them a call, and much thanks to uh, Dana for Yay. for handing that over so graciously. 294-7272 or 294-PAPA. Whichever oh, way you like to do Papa. that. Yeah. yeah. We're taking your calls on the wrestling guys since this is a talk show, and that is what we do. 457-1065. We'll put you right on the air with us. Talk about anything you want to talk about. Of course, we can talk about uh, WCW. Actually, I thought Nitro was pretty good. But there's a couple things on Nitro that actually really bothered me. And one was the Jeff Jarrett, uh, Dusty Rhodes angle where they had Ric Flair dressed up as Dusty Rhodes. And if you saw it, I want to talk about it because it was absolutely, utterly ridiculous. They had Dusty or Ric Flair was dressed up as Dusty Rhodes. Jeff Jarrett facing Dusty Rhodes. Jeff Jarrett beating the holy hell out of Ric Flair dressed up as Dusty Rhodes. And then Ric Flair, of course, after that was completely and utterly Jeff Jarrett's friend again. Made no sense to me whatsoever. And also, I, now you, don't wa you didn't watch Nitro, I'm sure. <laughs> no. Right? But there's one moment, and I want people to comment if they saw this too, because it's absolutely disgusting. They did their little road report. Mm -hmm. Where they do, you know, they're on the road to spring break. You know, that's like one of their big... Can you talk? Spring break. <laughs> it's the pulp. It's the, I have, you know what, I have throat problems, and I shouldn't even be, I shouldn't be in here talking right now. I but out not. of the, no, once again, as Dana, the Papa John pizza, as kind as he, yes, was, he was, and look, Sean is, Sean is frantically, you should have seen Sean bolt through that door. Oh, I missed it. Sean bolted through that door so quickly. He's on his way up the stairs. He's going to be out of breath, and I'm not going to put him trip like I'm not going to turn his mic on if he's out of breath. <laughs> it's going to sound even worse. But um, out of the kindness of my own heart, I came in here. Okay, but anyway, so they, they have this. They have this. Back to WCW. Yeah. They have this thing with spring break. Mm-hmm. And they build up a big a show for spring break, you know, and then they have a bunch of uh, drunken hooligans, you know, watching wrestling, and it's it's Not really an enjoyable break, yeah. show. Sure. <laughs> sure. And uh, so they have that, and so they ha they're on the road to spring break right now, and okay. they were at Clemson. Okay, Clemson. Okay, okay, University, yeah. Yes. They have the paw. That's very good. <laughs> they have the paw, and so there they are, and they're basically interviewing the crowd. Okay. And they keep focusing on people, and all the people keep saying is, is I love AOL. <laughs> and at one point... They had Hugh Morris up on stage, bobbing his head, you know, just like, you know. AOL? You know, yeah. I, well, it's owned by Time Warner. Okay. Time Warner and AOL just merged. Okay. Remember this whole thing? No, yeah. Okay. So then they have, they have Hugh Morris. Basically, you know how, like, there's, you know, those guys that go to rock concerts and they just, you know, they bob their head a little bit? Yeah, like maybe Okay, like they're banging kind their head thing. just a little kind bit? Bangers. Hugh Morris is doing that while the entire crowd is singing... 1-800-COLLECT. Oh. They're going, 1-800-COLLECT, 1-800-COLLECT. And he's bobbing his head right along to that. Why? Because because he gets paid. That's so stupid. It absolutely. I felt I felt for him. You felt for him? I did. You felt who? No, no, no. You're the one that I'm agreed sorry. to do Sean, it. Sean, we already said how frantically you, you bolt. We had the video monitor on. I wish yes. I could have seen how that. How frantically you bolted through there. What? We're doing oh a good my job. gosh! We're doing a good it's, job. It, no, no, it wasn't that. It's because of the pizza. The pizza's here. Look, even Joe. Well, you know, you know, you know right now, pizza right now, not mix, taking the whole thing. Listen, Joe, so. right now, Mix One Zero Seven Seven. Mix One Zero Seven Seven is going unsupervised because he's over here hoarding our food. <laughs> what, what do I have here? The pager. Oh, that's good. Right, that's right. good. That's no excuse. <laughs> Real nice. That's no. So they gave him a page of thinking. Yeah, he could come over and the pizza. Pizza. Meanwhile, Barbara Streisand and NSYNC could be clashing over there. We can only hope. They probably, that would be an interesting sound. Hey, Sean, it? What's what, the news? Actually? You know, I... <laughs> news time is over. No. <laughs> Sean always has more news. news I always have a lot of news. Over. I always have a lot of news. Look. There was news already they, right here. See, you did I well. got that. You did well. Julia did that. Yeah, Julia did. Anyway. Uh, I'm the one that got it off the web. Okay, nice job. Thank you. Anyway, Thunder tonight. What will you see on Thunder? You will see Scott Steiner versus the Cat. Will we see another road to spring break? I'm Probably. sure you oh, will. Oh, good. You will also see uh, Lance Storm and Conan, Rick Steiner and Hugh Morris, Elix Skipper and Shane Helms. Also tonight, uh, look for Buff Bagwell. He does get physically involved 
in a match between Lex Luger and Chuck Palumbo, but Buff Bagwell suffering a pain in the neck, which is what he's been for like, like what, which, three years. Which is named Lex Luger. Yeah, well, yeah, this could be it, too. And uh, anyway, so he is uh, he did not wrestle the, the uh, Thunder tapings on Monday, but uh, we can only hope that that will continue and he will not appear next week, too. <laughs> we'll see. What was that, I'm bad? No, I'm just shocked that we get anyone from WCW on this show anymore. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm just shocked. WCW loves us. Okay. But why? Huh? We're always so critical <laughs> of what they do. But they're critical of themselves, though, too. Yeah, I mean, they, they are. If, if you, if you ever talk to them, like, uh, you know, just, uh, I mean, they're very critical of themselves. Well, I mean, there was a point in time, in all honesty, where WCW, uh, members of WCW were kind of banned from the show. Uh, we were kind of a show that, you know, don't talk to them after Goldberg came on. Yeah, and then, exactly. And then everything smoothed over and everything was fine, and, and we're, we're still okay with them. Once we started getting press. Yes. Right, uh, once you start getting the press, a, then they go, you get, oh! You get that internet press, and everybody wants to be on your show. Yeah, did you mention who we have on tonight? Yes, I did. Okay, you did. Good, good. Yes. Good. So... From the Rock and Roll Express. One half of the Rock and Roll Express. And I'm going to have, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I may have a hard time with this interview. Why is that? Because I like the Midnight Express, and I always cheered against him. I think you'll be okay. All right, I'm just telling you. I think you'll be okay. I, I mean, you know, he was pretty mean to them. <laughs> Ricky was mean to the Midnight Express. He was, and then and then you know when he had that big feud with Ric Flair too. I right. mean, he was mean. He was pretty mean. You know, I I, I he wasn't you know, fair to Flair. There's a lot of descriptions of Ricky Morton I've seen throughout the years. Mean has never been one of them. Well, except when he was Richard Morton. Then yeah, you know. I mean, you know, he gave him he gave him a run for his money on that title. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And we'll so, talk about that and a whole lot more. Yeah. He's, he's still one of the most active guys on the independent circuit. Yeah, too. he most definitely is. So uh, we'll can, talk about that. Are we going to talk to him about the ICP tour? We can talk about anything <laughs> you want. That's what I want to talk to. Him yeah, about. you know, that'd be great. Anyway, uh, ratings. By the way, Raw did a 4.5. Nitro did a 2.1. Surprising that the ratings continue to slide the way they are for the WWF. Yeah, but SmackDown still was pretty strong, wasn't it? Like a four point. Hold on, we got it right here. Yeah, it was four a strong rating. But something? why? Why the slide in Raw? I assume most of the people listening to the program tonight watch Monday Night Raw, but yeah. apparently a number of people in the country are not watching. For example, the overrun on Raw normally would draw a year ago six five seven zero. Oh. Right. Drew a 5.0 this past Monday. Really? Night. Now, is that because of the move over to TNN? Are you trying to tell me the move to TNN cost them two points in the ratings? No. No, because I'll tell you exactly what it is. You know, because because people, you know, when people see me out of, out of here and everything else, you know, and like my friends, you know, mm -hmm. that a lot of times they'll ask me, "Hey, what happened on wrestling?" I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't watch it. I get a lot, I get a lot of that as well. Or what's going on right now? Mm -hmm. I didn't watch it. What's going on? Right. It's like, hey, I watched Raw. Who was that guy? I was talking with a friend of mine Monday who is uh, admittedly a casual wrestling fan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were sitting there talking, and I mentioned the fact that, uh, uh, you know, Jerry Lawler was gone. And she was like, really? <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, we do this on a right. daily basis. Absolutely. And so we follow it, and we love it. And I'm not saying people don't watch it every week, don't like it, or don't love it as well, but for them, it's not... As important as it is, it's just people jumping off the bandwagon. It's that too, I'm sure. I you mean, know, it's not the flavor just, of the month anymore. Yeah, that's right. You know, and, and we have been dedicated. We have been dedicated to to wrestling for for all of our lives, and it really. I know. I have been. I know you. For have. Wrestling for all yes. of all of our lives, and you know, and now it's just the fickle fans just just jumping off. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and get to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express. Your phone calls, 457-1065. We are the Wrestling Guys. Uh, Buckeye Country, 106.5. Welcome back to the Wrestling Guys on Buckeye Country, 106.5. I am Sean Stidham. Willie F. is here as well. And joining us tonight, our very special guest, one half of certainly one of the most legendary tag teams of all time and still very active on the independent circuit, we are talking about Ricky Morton. Rick, how are you? Pretty good, man. How you doing? Uh, not doing badly. Uh, looking around, we, we always follow what's going on on the independent scene and whatnot, and you are all over the place. Last night, I think you were in West Virginia, correct? Uh, well, no, I was going to be there. It got snowed out last night. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, was, yeah, we had a big snowstorm over here on the East Coast. Heard about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm right in the middle of it. So give us a little bit of update what's going on. You have a website. People can get and, you know, follow you, and you have a message board and all that. Oh, yeah. My website is www. Rock and with A and D, Row, Ricky R C K Y Morton dot com. 
Uh, it sounds... Yeah, I just make sure everybody gets that right there. I just sat down here a while ago. My wife just made me some some fresh flounder and some steak. <laughs> I was eating good, man. <laughs> so it's like dinner time with Ricky Morton. Oh, yeah. Cool. There you go. Uh, give us a little bit. You've been in the wrestling business. How did you actually get involved? How did you get started? Wait, in the wrestling business? Yes. Man, I've been in the wrestling business all my life. My dad was a professional wrestler out of, out of Nashville, Tennessee, which he worked, you know, for Nick Goulas, Roy Welch. He worked for uh, the Grams in Florida, uh, Crockett Senior in North Carolina. I grew up in the wrestling business. Uh, from day on, you know, I went to the part that I went to a wrestling school and trained. I grew, I grew around it. By the time I was able to wrestle, I knew how, you know. Gotcha. Two. And then uh, how did you end up getting involved as far as with Robert Gibson and getting the Rock and Roll Express started? Whose idea was that? That was Jerry Lawler's and Jimmy Hart's out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh -huh. First, got to understand the, the thing that went on down there. It was, uh, at the time, you, you had the tag team, the Fabulous ones in Memphis, Tennessee. Right. Steve Carter and Stan Lane. And Robert and I have worked Memphis for years, but I think Jerry Lawler and Jerry Jarrett got into it a little bit. So Lawler was going to go opposition from him. Well, opposite promoters getting into it? That's something new. Well, promoters getting into it. You know, he was going to have his op open up his own area around there, so he wanted a tag team. Well, at the time, I was working for uh, Joe Blanchard at Southwest Championship Wrestling, and Jerry Lawler showed up, come on, went in there to get me, talk to me about the situation. So I went back to Memphis, but there was this let me just say that uh, they didn't go opposition. They stayed together. But me and Robert went back to Memphis. They did. They promised to make a tag team. And uh, first of all, we was going to call ourselves like the R&R &R Express. And then we got to looking at some of these rock and roll magazines and uh, the way they was dressed and stuff. So we uh, along with them come up with the Rock and Roll Express. And you know what? It worked. <laughs> did you ever think that that would be, you know, the staple of your career, being a part of this tag team? No, I didn't. You know, because let me tell you something, man. Back in the days, you know, you wore the short tights. The knee pads and stuff. I remember the first day, Robert. Now, uh, I'll tell you what, man. We, we wrestled Memphis on a Sunday afternoon, and me, Robert, and Jerry Lawler went to a flea market across the street. And, brother, we bought bandanas and feathers. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and really, to tell you the truth, man, I had all that stuff on, and I was embarrassed to death to go out there. <laughs> um, uh, they played the music. You know what? And it, when it clicked, it got over great. And when <laughs> and uh, I came back, you know, the fans are talking to you. He said, man, when y'all come out, we didn't know if y'all was Indians or Gypsies. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, but you know what? It, it, it took off. It did. It really did. Oh. You, yeah, you guys You guys, take a look at what you did throughout the 80s, and certainly you were uh, probably the most popular tag team in the 80s, without a doubt. But part of your popularity had to come from your confrontations with Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express. Well, you know, that was... Uh, you know, that was one of the greatest feuds, I think, in the history of wrestling. I, I think it was definitely one. For ourselves, you know, it was like the Express and the Express facing each other. But see, you got to understand things, too, you know. Uh, like, I'm going to start all over again, too. You know, when we was in Memphis and we did do the Rock and Roll Express, well, you see, we always played second fiddle to the fabulous ones. No matter what, that was Jerry Jerry's team, you see. Right. And Bill Watts. I know, uh, I know, I know you heard of Bill Watts. Oh, oh sure. yes, yeah, absolutely. I, got, I, got, I respect Bill a lot. Bill was looking something new for his territory. So we come up to Memphis, Tennessee, and he's seen Robert and I. And uh, you got to understand that uh, this is it's, it's the way you make things. You know, he, he come up, he's seen Robert and I, and he's seen potential with us. And he took us to Louisiana, which, buddy, I mean, he got us over big time. The same way just about Dusty did, because they, they had the, their own Russian team in Louisiana. And uh, you see it in the meanwhile, you had the Cornette and the Midnight Express, which were showing their tapes, fixed to come in. And how Watts got us over so popular, you know, at that time, because you, know, you got to understand, back in those days, man, you did see little babyface tag teams. Although, you know, I felt like Cowboy Lane the Midget when I first walked in that territory. Everybody there was six foot eight, 350 pounds. But, you know, it, it's something that people call on to. It caught the, the teenage girls, which you say at the time, you know, and no, notice it's like a bar. You draw women, you draw people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so that's the, way it, that's the way it really first started happening, you know. Do you have any idea how many matches you guys had together? Because, oh, I mean, Lord, that's got to be that's got to be the most matches any two teams have ever had together. You know what, dude? We worked, Robert and I, so you got to understand you worked territories back in the days, and you worked seven days a week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it wasn't no, uh, well, I, I sprayed my ankle, I don't wrestle all night. But I mean, how can you tell 10,000 people? Well, they paid to see their ticket to watch the Rock and Roll Express, so he's got a twisted ankle. Right. You know, it don't work, you know. So back then, I mean, you worked, whether you was hurt or not, you worked every day. 
And then when we left Louisiana, I went to uh, Crockett's territory. He was a little bit of a on Sundays. So you got to say you worked nine.